everyone. I'll say it again. Good morning, everyone. Look at your neighbor on your left, your right. Say, girl, you look good today. You are looking good. You're looking amazing today. All right. Well, if you all don't mind, we want to take a few moments and set the atmosphere. How many of you are excited to be here today? Just give a hand clap. to receiving something and getting something that I can take back with me, with me personally. So if y'all don't mind, let's just stand very quickly. We're going to open up with an invocation. And I can't think of a better way to start our day than to just set this atmosphere by giving God some praise. Can we do that very quickly? Oh, one too many hallelujahs. How many of you know we'll be on up in here? Amen. Amen. It will be on. Y'all know Mary Dixon. If it goes one too many, she will get a shout on for you, right? You all know Judge Geronda. Geronda will lift her hands and give God praise. So we women, we have a special thing that goes on with us. So let's go before the Lord very quickly and set this atmosphere. If you want to say amen, hallelujah, just clap your hands. Free to do that along the way, all right? Let's go before the Lord. God of all creation, we come before you on today to give you honor and praise. For you are worthy of our praise. And oh, Father, how great you are. You have blessed us in so many ways, and we say thank you, Lord, right now. We thank you for the opportunity to unite in this moment of prayer. And gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you on today, in this hour, and in this moment, asking your blessing as you help us as we gather together. We speak your peace and your perfect order into this atmosphere. We acknowledge that you have already accomplished in each of us something that is amazing and unique. Lord, grant us a fresh supply as we commit to using our gifts well and using them responsibly. Lord, grant us a fresh and new anointing for our creativity, God, our ideas, Lord, and our energy so that each and every task that we take on will bring honor and glory to you, Father. Lord, where we're confused, provide us divine guidance by the Holy Spirit. Where we're weary, energize us, edify us, and in those stressful moments, teach us to learn and lean wholly on you and rest in your peace, God, that surpasses all understanding. Help us to work together, God, to encourage each other and to perform in excellence on today, and we ask that you would help us to challenge each other as we reach higher and farther and be the best that we can do. Father God, we thank you in advance for what will be accomplished here on today at the Women on the Move Summit. And Father, we ask that your hand of blessing will cover it as it goes forth. And we thank you for your wisdom and guidance that will be provided for each and every speaker that you call to impart their experiences on each of us. For you are a great and wonderful God. And to you we give all honor, all glory, and praise. And we pray these things in the mighty, matchless name of Jesus. And all agree, say amen. Well, good morning, good morning. Take your seats, take your seats. We are here. We have made, I'm telling you, this journey has been something, but it's, I've just enjoyed each and every bit of it. Each and every bit of it. I want to say good morning. I am Kim McNair of KMP Kim McNair Productions, and I'm so glad to see you at the Women on the Move Summit 2014, changing the game on how we do business. That's right. Oh, we're going to change the game. Y'all know it's already changing. It's already changing, I'm telling you. I'm just so excited. But this up, let me tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, I came originally out of the fashion industry in the New York, New Jersey area. I retired in 90 and moved to Orlando in 1991. And when I got to Orlando, I was like, hmm, 
Things just aren't, I'm, I'm used to fast pace. I'm used to the city. Where, where is everything at? It's all about Mickey Mouse. What's going on? So I went out in the community and I just, you know, was making community connections because you know it's power in the connection. So I'm out networking and doing different things and I said, you know what? I need to just go ahead and just get me a business started and just kind of let them know there's things we can do other than just going out to dinner. I love Mickey Mouse. I love Universal. But I, I know there's a thriving community here in Orlando. So I, I went out and I did what I knew how to do. I said I knew modeling. I knew the fashion industry. So hey, I'm going to do a fashion show. So I just went out to the community, recruited some ladies together, gave them uh, professional training. I took $500, a $500 investment. $500 investment. And I rented me a, a ballroom and just pulled it all together with the community. And my first event was a sellout. They were like, what? Who was Kim in there? Wait a minute, she came up in here and did this in Orlando? The fashion show? It was like, I was like, oh my God. So I was like, Lord, what are you showing me? And already within me, I was already walking in my purpose. You know, I was I was given this. This was this was a gift from God. I was all, I had the gift to coordinate. I had the gift within me to to bring people together, to to promote, and just do all those types of things. So I was just so excited, and I just continued to move. I just kept moving forward. I was slip and fall, but I get right back up. Okay, I made a mistake on this side. Uh oh, I think I won't do that no more. I get back up, and I just continued on and continued on, and now I'm 20 plus years in the business. I relocated to Atlanta in 2007. I have worked with so many people in, in, in the industry uh, from doing fashion shows and events in Orlando. I show directed Black Expo Orlando for three years, and you know that's already a challenge. Helped with the urban development in Orlando, and it was just a, a great, great experience for me. And I, then I started doing corporate events, corporate meetings, and uh, conferences, and just to, to continue to grow from there and grow my business and expand k and so the production, let me say, well, why production? Well, I started out doing productions. Everything I do is a production. So I said, hey, I'm going to keep it. I already branded it, so I, I couldn't change it. So, you know, I just kind of continued on and doing everything that I was doing. And like I said, I moved here in 2007, and I rebranded and expanded, and now KMP. Kim McNair. So when you hear KMP, y'all know, oh, that's Kim. That's my friend. So um, I have, we have a wonderful day planned for you guys. We have some professional men and women here. And they are here to encourage you, inspire you, and to just uplift you and take you to the next level in your career or in your business. I'm telling you, the panel that we have today, these women, and we have some guys coming as well, but these women are just dynamic in what they do. And I felt that we needed to have an opportunity to come together as business women, as leaders uh, in leadership roles, and just to get some, just a new room, a new, just some new tools, something we need to carry us on. Because the women that you're going to meet today have been doing it for a very long time, and they're not always on the marquee. You don't always hear and see, but they're doing it and doing it very well. And we need to know how to do that, right? Yeah. Okay, I'm here to learn too. <laughs> so please ask questions, ladies. Ask questions. When it's time for Q&A, ask questions. Uh, network, take notes. And when you have the opportunity to do a break and lunch, you know, go and network with them. Just, just talk, talk to them. We have our vendors here. They're all here with information uh, to, you know, just to share with you all. When it comes to doing business, we need to know about finance. We need to get, have our money right. You know, that's, that's important. That is very important to what we do. So uh, Wells Fargo is here. Uh, they, I, I, what I said I wanted to do this, I met Chris at an event, at a table, networking. And he was at the other side of the table. I said, how you doing? I'm Kim McMahon. <laughs> <laughs> I had to put on my other voice. You know, <laughs> but he had a son with him, so I had to just like, okay, wait a minute, he got a son with him. So anyway, uh, I met Chris, and I said, I said, you know, I want to talk to you. I have something I want to do. He said, all right, give me a call. And follow-up is very important. I followed up. And I called him and I told him my vision. He said, I like that. He said, this is something I may want to get behind. So I was like, well, he's like, well, you know, let, let me see what I can do. But uh, Chris is here. Chris, I want you just to come up real quick. Just, you, you can tell it better than I can. Give it up for Chris. So, the Wells Fargo Bank. Yes, yes. Yes, Chris, come on up. Just, tell him, just give him a little something because I know you're a busy man. Well, good morning. Good morning. 
Well, ladies, I, I had a scripted out speech I was going to say. I'm going to kick that out to the curb, but I do have to give a plug in for my company, right? <laughs> Wells Fargo, because they pay the bills, right? We have, our, <laughs> we have our local team, Wells Fargo, in the back, and also we have a, a great team up front. I know Cassandra's here with the Riverdale team. Corlette is here with uh, Summit Point and also been an integral part uh, of the event, kind of from a hands-on standpoint, and many other team members. But I'll tell you a couple things about Kim. When you meet Kim for the first time, you know you've met a lady or a person with a purpose and an agenda, right? When you say no, Kim knows how to get you to say yes and commit. But at the end of the day, uh, growing up in a single home, uh, a single home, single parent home, I actually had the privilege to watch my mom cook, go to the basketball games, football games, go to work on time and I'm like man how do you get it done to this day I still can't figure it out and I don't think most guys can and I always say ladies know how to get it done because as guys we can really just do one thing at a time but ladies multitask can get several things done but I will say today it's going to be a life changing event if you're open because if you look at the agenda it is top notch game changers uh, on the agenda and it's about giving back because the price that you paid to come in if you went anywhere where else you're probably gonna pay a thousand to two thousand dollars a ticket just to get this valuable information so I challenge you to be open look for the purpose and you'll find it today and if you don't it's your fault because you have the game changers here today that will take you to the next level and really help you actually help other people in life so thank you again for having us Kim and we're happy to be a part of this fabulous event today and again uh, look for that life-changing event today all right thank all right. you Chris Vice President District Manager Wells Fargo my partner yay but I just I want to go ahead and just thank everybody. I want to thank Miss Lucille O'Neill who always encourages me. I can call her anytime. And I want to thank you because when I said I was doing this, I said, okay, I have this to do, that to do. She said, well, well, I, I got the lunch. You just you go ahead and do what you do. I got I'll take care of the lunch. And I thank you so much for being our lunch sponsor to be feeding us today and our breakfast. I want to say uh, thank you to State Farm, Rena and Chris Richardson. They gave me full support, no questions asked. Are they still here whispers? Oh, they went back to the office? Okay, that's all right. State Farm, d, &D Catering and Decor, Barbara, she's probably like, hey, Barbara, how you doing? Thank you so much. Sometimes get this out of the way so we can get going. WCLK, Wendy Williams, the general manager with WCLK, 91.9. I'm not sure if she's here, but I said, hey, Wendy, I need to get the word out. We need to get to the business people, and she was able to do that for me. Uh, Carolyn Robinson with Pixel, which is also a part of Streaming Face. She said, Kim, I want to support you. I'm a woman on the move. I want to thank them as well. Success 360, Gavin McGuire, and the River Downtown Center and their staff, Sharon, Avis, Cece, the whole crew. Thank you, guys. All right. Honestly, beverage, the beverage, take your beverage home. Honestly, beverage, you can uh, purchase this beverage at, uh, at Publix. They wanted to support uh, Women on the Move, e, e Tasty Grill, Ethan Phillips, who helped sponsor some of the ladies to be here with that discount, California Pizza Kitchen, uh, Dolores Salon and Spa, Kim Anderson. Hey, she's got an $80 value spa package. I have to give it away. Uh oh. <laughs> Dana Lee is here with Global App Suite. Where's Dana? Dana, raise your hand. Where's she at? Right here. Dana. Oh, hey, Dana. Dana just, oh, you want to tell them how to use the app real quick, right? And Dana did the app for us. Also, the Clayton County Chamber of Commerce Women in Business Mentoring Program. Mentees, raise your hand. Where my mentees at? Woo! So, I'm telling you, and I just want to thank my wonderful special guests and, and panelists. Come on, give them a round of applause. They're right over here. They don't have that introduction, so I always want to take it away. Going. All right. Good morning, ladies. Good morning. Good morning. I met most of you, but for those that did not meet, I wanted to encourage you to download Kim's mobile app. Yes, Kim is in 2014 doing a day with Women on the Move with a mobile app. And for your speakers, if you have any specials or promotions you want to send out to these attendees today, please email me and I will give you my business card. Uh, sponsored as well, but you will have speaker bios and other information, so thank you. It's in the app and Google Play. In App Store, it's McNair PR. Google Play is McNair Productions. 
Thank you. All right. Thank you, Dan. See another woman on the move. Watch out. We're doing some amazing things, guys. Uh, now, if you, uh, with your mobile devices, if you can put them on uh, vibrate or silent, um, though there is a free public Wi-Fi here, so you can use your, um, your uh, mobile devices. The lunch is a buffet. It will be served outside. You will go out the door here to my left here out the door and come back in the double doors. Also the restrooms are out the door to the left at the end of the hallway, okay? Gotta get the housekeeping. Please visit, visit the vendors doing a great lunch all day. Uh, Miss O'Neill is having a book sale. Ten dollars, autograph book, yeah, all right. Miss Lucille O'Neill, I wanna get me another copy. But she has a book sale. Please see all of the vendors. We have some wonderful authors here and, and uh, just a lot of uh, information for you all to take. Because you can, these are people that I work with and they definitely can help you along the way, okay? Uh, so I wanted to tell you that. So you ready to go? Y'all ready to go? Okay, okay. I'm going to give you one nugget and then I'm going to bring up Mayor Dixon. All right, here's a, I always do nuggets. This one is for you. This is something I wanted to give to you. And it's talking about the process, the process of execution and moving forward, getting the job done, okay? You have to see the idea. You need to see the big picture. You need to live it out. Live out your imagination, but not your history. Okay, live out your imagination, but not your history. Say what you plan to do and think it through. Write it down and make it plain. Y'all heard that, right? We, we do that. Okay, you have to sow into it because you will reap what you sow. That means you have to invest in it. Okay, you have to invest in it. And serve with all your heart. Serve with all your heart. Serve with a good attitude and gladness. My tagline is let us serve you. I'm here to serve. Whatever he has put me on this earth to do, it's a service. So my, my product is a service, so I have to make sure that I'm giving good customer service in all that I do um, when I serve my clients, okay? And you want to show your results. And I don't mean in boasting, in your presentation. That means when you walk in the room, they're going to say, okay, she got it down. It shows. It's shown in your presentation. So show the results. When they walk in the room, I want it to be together. Oh, okay, she, she seems to be professional. And that's important because before I can open my mouth or do anything, and I just met some of you for the first time today, my presentation had to be together. That means I had to have my team here on time. We needed to set up. We, we were moving fast, but we had to get it together because, again, presentation is everything. Okay? So I wanted to give you those little five tidbits. So, again, ladies, are you ready? Yeah. I'd like to take this opportunity to introduce to you the mayor of this beautiful, wonderful city of Riverdale, Dr. Evelyn Wynn Dixon. Well, I'm radical this morning. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, girls. We're women in the, in the gentleman I see in the back, back there. And that one, too. Uh, let's do that again. Praise the Lord, everybody. First, give an honor to Christ. He's the head of my life, my everything. He my boyfriend right now. <laughs> my confidant and everything. I want to take this great, great opportunity to my friends that I see, my new acquaintances that I'm going to make, and say you're welcome to the city of Riverdale. Thank you. And on behalf of our council and all of our support staff, we welcome you. I welcome you today to om up your ear gates. I welcome you to om up your mind. I welcome you to om up your heart. Because when they don't want a card, then you can move forward. I want you to take your spiritualistic aspect about yourself and understand that what we're doing today is not, or in a better word, it ain't about us. Amen. We are trying to make it better for somebody else. Amen. We're going to share, want to welcome you to share your stories because everybody got one. That's right. I got a couple of them. <laughs> You didn't know I used to be a five beside you here, baby. <laughs> I need you to know that. <laughs> but sometimes life makes changes. The ones that we want and the ones that we don't. So today I welcome you to enjoy yourself. Jot down some pearls and take it back with you and let somebody know if you can help one somebody. Just one. Your living is not in vain. And then what if that one go help one? 
How many girls can we change their mindsets today? Oh, I didn't see you hold up your card. My my I'm okay. Oh, okay. I be watching the girl. You know I'm from the hood, babe. I be watching from the side. <laughs> I be watching, watching. <laughs> but as I take my seat, this needs to be about love today. Yes. And we're not looking like who the prettiest, who the smallest. Who the riches? Lucille and I have already said, if they knew the real story, Hello. if you knew why we're here today, if you just knew that when we leave here today, we're going to be so empowered that you will welcome people into your private zone to say, baby, if you want to know, I'm here to help. And that's what we're going to do. So on behalf of this great city that I love, and how about in this city we have women in key positions moving it forward. So now I want to do a presentation to Miss Kim. Yeah, come on up, sure. <laughs> Wait a minute, let me ask you this. This is a sidebar. This don't count on my minute. Okay. Did you see, did you see Miss Thing when she came up here? And she talking about, yeah, and I meet him. And she was trying to model and all of that right there. I said, I walk like happy feet. She need to go on and stop. I'm not about to do any of that today. Well, come on out there. We're going to step out here. Oh, we're going to step out there? Yeah, so they can all get right. that little picture. Well, you go first. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> I ain't finna walk with her. Yeah, you know how you know how the people stand when they talk and they try to cross that leg over this leg you stand. Child, I can't balance. Oh, stop! <laughs> right here. So don't do that. Okay. Okay, okay. we're gonna stop. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> <laughs> this is from the city of Riverdale. I know this over here, and this is prim and proper how we supposed to make it. But I just want to tell you, not as Mayor Dixon, and not as Dr. Dixon. But I want to tell you from Evan, a mother and a grandmother and a hard worker, I would not be more proud of than you if you were oh, my daughter. Thank you. Because you want to go out and help somebody. You want to make a difference. You're bringing women together because in Matthew 18 and 18, he said, well, have two or more touching and agreeing. Yes, yes. Whatever we bound on earth, we bound in heaven. And whatever we lose on earth, we lose in heaven. And I pray that God give you all of your blessings. And when the naysayers come, mm -hmm. overlook them. Mm -hmm. Step over. Yeah. Oh. And know that God got a greater purpose. So when trouble comes, the opportunity comes. You know we got a greater purpose. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Proclamation of the Honorable Mayor and City Council. I love to say about yourself. Okay. <laughs> Women on the Move Summit. Kim Production. Come here, girl. <laughs> I ain't got a glass. Yeah, uh-huh. She she talk right. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> Proclamation of the Honorable Mayor and City Council of the City of Riverdale, Georgia, recognizing Women on the Move Summit. Whereas Kim McNair Productions LLC will host Women on the Move Summit on Thursday, September 18, 2014, a motivational business conference with keynote speakers. The event held at the Riverdale Center for the Arts, Business, and Leisure Services, located at 7210 Church Street, Riverdale, Georgia, will showcase women as they share strategies for business success. The great city of Riverdale acknowledges Ms. Kale McNair and her leadership with Women on the Move Summit. We recognize her important role in the progress of this and surrounding communities. We are pleased that her work will continue in the years to come. The 2014 guest speakers, Ms. Sarah Buchanan, Sonia Booker, Keisha Cameron, Judge Geronda B. Carter, Glenetta Griffin, LaVon Lewis, Lucille O'Neill, Jennifer Pearson, Sherrod Shackerford, Beverly K. Watson, and of course, Dr. Evelyn Wynn Dixon. Each have respectively been a shining example of inspiration, serving as mentors, advisors, and pillars of strength for countless individuals through the years. Kim McNair has been an inspiring influence for good in this community. She has earned and justly deserves this public recognition. 
Therefore, in light of her work, we recognize Kim McNair Productions, LLC. Ooh. I am Dr. Evelyn Wayne Dixon, by virtue of authority vested in me as mayor of the city of Riverdale, Georgia, and on behalf of city council members, Cynthia Sam Jones, and Sal Davis, Wanda Wallace, Kenneth Ruffin, do hereby recognize Kim McNair Productions, LLC. I extend my appreciation to Kim McNair and her organization. Be it known that Kim McNair has worked diligently to serve the needs of this community. In witness whereof, I hereunto set my hand on this 18th day of September and have caused the official seal of the Great Seal of Georgia to be affixed. Dr. Evelyn Wynn Dixon, Mayor of the City of Riverdale, Georgia. through this real, not real quick, but, uh-oh, uh-oh, uh -oh, Geronda. Oh, my bio, it's not in here, but that's okay. That's all right? All right, well look, ladies, I'd like to welcome you, welcome to you, our moderator for today, Judge Geronda V. Carter. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Good morning. How y'all doing this morning? I am pleased and it is my pleasure to serve as the moderator. I was excited when Ms. McNair asked that I do it. I've never called you Ms. McNair. When Kim asked that I do it. <laughs> and so I'm glad to be here. Talking about women on the move, Mayor Dixon, you know, I asked her one time, I said, Mayor, how do you do it? It was many years ago. Every time I see you, you're all together. Makeup, fabulous, personality, fabulous. And she said, I woke up like this. <laughs> I woke up like this. <laughs> and indeed, she is fabulous. Um, she didn't say that, but I did ask. Um, and she is a woman, woman on the move, and she does it so gracefully. Women on the move, it implies that we are going somewhere. Yes. It implies that we don't mind taking other sisters with us. And brothers, I don't mean to leave you out. I see you here, and it's my understanding that KMP has men on the move in the works. But women on the move also implies that we need to get to where we're going. Yes. And the woman that I'm about to bring to the podium should always be a part of that conversation. Can you guys hear me okay? No, yes? Okay, all right. Okay, okay is that better? Yes. All right, I'll try and hang out over here, all right. This woman understands what it means to be called to serve. She understands the type of focus it takes to fulfill her calling. And she doesn't mind sharing with others. L let's check the record on that. She may be the mother of one of the greatest athletes of all time, but she is definitely much more than Shaquille O'Neal's mom. Yes, so Acquainted early in life with turmoil, her circumstances shaped her perspective, strengthening her resolve to overcome the challenges she would later encounter. She has endured poverty, rejection, abuse, addiction, and the illness of a child. Yet today, her faith and compassion for others is stronger than ever. At the age of 12, she told God that she wanted to be a motivational speaker. A tall, skinny child, she always felt different, a feeling that caused her to have low self-esteem. Can you believe that? She frequently learned to drown her feelings with alcohol. 
Through 28 years of marriage, three more children, and a divorce, she never let go of her dream. She shares her life story candidly and often humorously in her book, Walk Like You Have Somewhere to Go. Touching on her years of spiritual unrest and mental welfare, she shares her struggles and disappointments against the backdrop of her sweetest memories and proudest accomplishments. She has gained the wisdom to recognize her wrongs and guide other women down a different path. Her story is proof, we like to say in court, beyond a reasonable doubt, Miss O'Neill, <laughs> that it's never too late for a new beginning. I assure you that today her self-esteem is anything but low. She is a woman on the move. She is Lucille O'Neill. Join me in celebrating her movement as she comes. Good morning. Good morning. Good afternoon, whatever the time may be for you. <laughs> I am excited about being here this morning because I believe that I too am one of those women on the move. So I, I welcome each and every one of you and allow me to honor God because I honor him in everything that I do. Amen. When Kim extended the invitation for me to come and provide you a motivational moment, I said, well, a moment, that's not enough time for me. <laughs> but I'm happy that I had the opportunity to just give a few words of encouragement and I want to inspire you to, to not think about retiring, but think about refocusing. Amen. Because I remember, by the way, I just turned 60. <laughs> and, and, and Kim coined a phrase for me. She said, oh, this sounds good. You're 60. <laughs> Gentlemen, welcome. Sexy. <laughs> Single. And saved. So I encourage all of us seasoned women in the room, don't think about retiring, we're gonna think about refocusing our lives. I wanna share with you just a little bit, it, my book that was written in 2010, in the publishing world they call it a memoir, but I have said that that is my testimony. Amen. It is my story and I always believe that my story would help someone else. When you look at me, you can't tell what I've been through, but I, I'm, I'm happy that I don't look like what I've been through. And I feel so good. I feel so good. And I, I say, if I had the opportunity to say something that's going to help somebody, I'm going to do that. So in my motivational moment, I want to just give you 10 tips that I've used, and they have helped me over the past few years. I had a dream one day, besides wanting to be a motivational speaker, I wanted to go to college. And when an opportunity presents itself to you, you have to know what that is. It was a dream I had because Shaquille was born when I was fresh out of high school. I was only 17 years old. So I went from having one child, went to be a wife, and had three more children, and outside of being a mother, I still had that dream to go to college because when we teach our children that education is so important and we don't have enough and we don't have any, I felt I was missing something. But I kept that dream alive and I expressed that dream to my children. So when my oldest son got this great, great job, great job he got, <laughs> paying good money, he heard me one day and he said to me, mommy, if you really want to go to school, he said, I got you. I said, you got me? He said, if you really want to go, I got you. And he encouraged me to enroll. And he said, I promise you, if you keep your grades up, I will pay your tuition. And he did that for me. It was an opportunity for me, though, Lucille, to get back to work, to really refocus my life and become that woman on the move. Today, there are many women doing so many wonderful things. And I think about a valuable lesson that I learned from my mother. She said, I don't care what you say, you will never know enough. Because you know we get into the habit like we know it all. We just know it all. 
that's a women thing, woman thing. But she taught me that you will never know enough, so I kept that dream alive about education. And my son, he paid for me to go to school, but I had to put in the work. So I want to encourage all of us today that have the dreams inside of us, remember that you have to put in the work. So here begins my 10 tips that I want to leave with you. And they're very, very simple. When all else fails, we, as women, we need to know how to pray and pray some more. And I say to other women, and I keep saying to myself, dream big. You're going to have more than one dream. And don't limit yourself. And I encourage women, don't limit yourselves because God has not put any limits on us. And we have all been blessed with a certain level of creativity. We have ideas. We have dreams. And our intelligence goes beyond what we can even think. And this is number three. This is so, so endearing to me because it says keep things simple on a daily basis because we can make things so hard. But if we keep it simple and remember that less is more, we can get so many other things accomplished. Number four, do not under any circumstances be afraid to express your feelings because that is your right as a human being to be able to do that today. And this is another biggie because we take in mind that our physical health is so important but we need to learn how to listen to our physical bodies Amen. when it sends us a message. Mm -hmm. Number six, Find something that you're passionate about and make it your life's work. And for me, it has become raising funds for anything in the community. My mother got sick and she died in 1996 from ovarian cancer. And our mother was a, a, a wonderful woman. I believe that she was a special woman. And I believe in her heart that she always wanted to do something to help somebody. So I have one brother and I have three sisters and we came together, we got a plan. And we established a simple fund in honor of our mother. And because our mother was a nurse by profession, we established an organization. It is called the Odessa Chambliss Quality of Life Fund. And all we do, simple, we get together, we have a good time, we beg for money, and we take your money, and we ship it to the universities and colleges under the nursing program. So we're raising money for nursing scholarships. And that is something that we're passionate about, just helping students everywhere when we get the opportunity. Number seven, travel the world and seek adventures. I was born and raised in Dublin, Georgia, in the country. They still got dirt roads there. We moved to North New Jersey, but I tell my friends and my relatives that there's a whole big world outside of North New Jersey. We traveled for 20 years in the military, and I encourage people, if you get an opportunity, get a plane ticket and just go somewhere. Just go anywhere to see the rest of the world. Because there's always something new to experience outside of your own city and outside of your own state. And this is number eight. Never think that you're too old because that's all in your mind. It's a mind thing. So do something youthful. Roller skate, uh, jump double dutch. If you got grandkids, get out there with them. Play Xbox, just do something. Because as long as you think you old, you're going to be old. <laughs> And I'm not trying to get old myself. <laughs> and I'm not sitting around waiting to die. So I encourage you, stay involved and keep it moving. And remember when, when you sit down in your quiet moments, just say, I remember when. I remember when I could skate backwards. <laughs> Let me try that again. <laughs> but do something youthful. And this is a biggie for women and men. Love real hard. Oh and establish meaningful relationships along the way. Number nine, love real hard and establish meaningful relationships and friendships along the way. I believe by being here today that I've gained a whole new 
room of friends because I believe that we working together, there's always something I can learn from each and every one of you. I welcome new friendships and I welcome opportunities to meet new people. And I encourage you women today to do the same thing. Sometimes we have to drop our title like Mayor Dixon did today and say, just from Evelyn. So just from Lucille, let's just keep it real now. Every now and then, we don't have to be Dr. So-and-so. Just be, oh girl, oh man. Yes. And remember that dash that goes in between our name. Let's make that dash count. And this is the last one, and this one is so very, very true. Because it, it, it means something to all of us that we have to believe in ourselves. When you put something in your mind that you want to do it, you have to believe that you can do that. I told God I want to be a motivational speaker. It took me a long time, but I believed for over 40 years I can do that. When I graduated from college and we had the speaker, I began to see my face instead of the speaker's face. And that's when I knew I can do that. And I never thought about getting paid. We can get paid for just having a gift of gab. I never thought about any money. I thought about what I could do. And I believed, I really, really believe that I can say something to help somebody. And I keep that with me. So I'm telling you women today, I'm telling you men today, believe in yourself. Everything starts with you. I had to learn how to look in the mirror and say, Lucille, you are a designer original. All right. And I learned how to listen to that still, small voice that's within me that says, yes, you can do this. Yes, you can do this. So let's step out, ladies. Stay moving. Let's keep moving, men, because we are moving. We're women on the move. We're men on the move. And we can continue to say to ourselves, yes, I can. Yes, I will. And I want to encourage you that when you leave here today with your new purpose and your new attitude, walk with your head up, walk with your shoulders back, and walk with purpose, and walk like you have somewhere to go. Thank you, Ms. O'Neill, for giving us those 10 tips for continuing to be women on the move. Thank you so much. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to dive into our first session. As I introduce each of our panelists, um, she will come and make her presentation, and she knows that she has approximately 10 minutes to do so, and that that rule will be strictly enforced by all the powers that are vested in me by the state of Georgia. <laughs> Um, which, which extend, of course, only to the lady holding the sign right there in front of the podium. Let me say, and I'm glad that um, the full introductions are um, provided on the app because I have shortened them, um, but they do have an introduction, Kim. Okay, they do have an introduction. Y'all didn't get that? Okay, never mind, y'all missed that one. Okay. <laughs> The first panelist is the founder and CEO of Your Talent Bridge in My Job Connector. Through Your Talent Bridge, she provides a human capital solutions firm specializing in campus recruiting, onboarding, and retention solutions for global corporations. Her My Job Connector, considered the next generation recruitment network, is an employer talent matching algorithm and talent engagement app website and app that delivers directly to an employer's recruiters the most qualified and engaged talent matches for an employer's company, jobs, and their corporate culture. She thinks of it as the e-harmony of recruiting. She has received over 17 awards for sales, achievement, and dedication to excellence, been named who's who worldwide among executives and professionals, and in 2013 was honored as the donor of the month of May by the National Center of Civil and Human Rights for her support of the center and its mission. My Job Connector was identified as a high potential growth company and hailed as the future of recruiting. 
She is a magna cum laude distinguished honors graduate of Spelman College, where she was, among other things, the recipient of the United States Achievement Academy All-American Scholar Award. Being committed to and passionate about issues surrounding underserved communities and youth talent development, she has dedicated over $15,000 in time and service on behalf of Your Talent Bridge to Usher's New Look Foundation. She is also a founding member of the Women's Solidarity Society, an affiliate group of the National Center for Civil and Human Rights. As evident through her participation today, she is committed to women's empowerment and issues facing women. She is my Spellman sister. She is a woman on the move. She is Sarah Buchanan. Join me in celebrating her movement as she can. Good morning. Good morning. So each of you are a woman on the move. So just join me in saying, I am a woman on the move. I am a woman on the move. One more time. I am a woman on the move. That sounds fantastic. <coughs> Kim, I'd like to thank you. Where are you? Somewhere. Yes. Kim, thank you. Thank you for the honor to join you today in this just amazing experience. Um, thank you, Mayor Dixon. And all of you, each of you has an amazing, incredible gift that only meeting life head on is going to help you identify and find. So I just want to share with you, you know, for a few moments today, part of my story. I hope it's a story that is within each of you and allows you to take away something, something inspirational, something that will help to change your life. One of the things that we've heard this morning is this common theme about passion, about faith, and also about reaching to the stars and not settling for less than what you can achieve. So one of the things that Lucille mentioned was this quiet space within each of us that really guides us and directs us to our divine purpose. And if you will just take a few moments just to close your eyes for just a second, I want to help you identify what that voice is. Okay, open your eyes. What did, what did you experience? Quietness. Quietness? Peace. Peace. What else did you experience? Expectations? Anyone else? Darkness. Darkness. <laughs> Anything else? Snowman. Okay, that's great. So one of the so Eckhart Tolle, um, who's an author, best-selling author. One of the th this is actually one of the most powerful experiences or exercises that I've ever experienced. And commonly, what happens when you close your eyes, you'll experience thoughts that go through your head. And then, what you will also find is a quiet space within you that's actually the observer of those thoughts. And the observer of those thoughts is actually your connection to, your to the divine. I really think it's the voice of God that is talking to us, but what you have to do is actually quiet yourself in order to tap into that. And what I can also share with you, being a woman on the move myself, is that every bit of who I am today and every inspirational thought or message or direction that I got came from that space. And I think that that is the most powerful space within each of us. The thoughts that are going through your head are actually the voice of your conscious self or your ego self. And that is the voice that will always keep each of us on a rat race. It will always keep us wanting more. It will never be satisfied, and it's never going to be the place in which the voice comes to you through that will allow you to tap into your greatest potential. <coughs> so when I was six, I had a vision that whatever I was going to do at the height of my career was going to have a global impact on people in a positive way. I had no idea what that meant, but that vision stuck with me for the next some odd years. 
not going to count. But what I can tell you is that I initially thought that that vision was going to manifest through music. Um, I started playing violin when I was two and a half, picked up piano, also landed with boys. And so when I came to Atlanta, I got into the music industry a little bit, and I said, you know what, this is really not for me. So God, how is this vision going to manifest? And I went ahead, went through Spelman, and then decided to, to start a career in corporate sales for Bell South. And so, however, that voice continued to be strong within me. And I, and I continued to say, God, how is that vision going to manifest? So went into sales, rose very quickly through the ranks of Bell South, became a sales manager. And it was at that point that was a defining moment where I was able to identify that I had a passion for high potential talent identification and for development of that talent. About two years later, we had a leadership change within our organization. And in that leadership change, I went from having a leader within our business unit that really valued excellence and delivery of results and really valued the things that are truly important with great authentic leaders. And we went from that leader to a leader that used fear and intimidation tactics. And I said, you know what? I cannot, I cannot lead a team of account executives in this type of environment. So I made the decision to leave. But at that point, though, I still had identified this passion for recruiting. And within that two-year span, what also happened in that change of leadership, we went from two different business models, from a consultative sales approach to a transactional model. And the difference of what was required in the people, in the salespeople that we were hiring, were very, very different skill sets. And so with that being said, one of the things that we saw within our business unit was a rise in attrition and turnover. People leaving the organization, we went from 30% with people being promoted into the environment to people leaving um, at a rate of 50%. And I said, this is just not sustainable. So what can I do? And I developed the foundation of this talent and employer matching algorithm. That is the foundation of what I hope to be a multi-billion dollar company within 10 years. But, but it was in one of the most uncomfortable experiences in my corporate career that that talent and matching algorithm and that foundation was actually born. So as we go through challenges, there, um, there were two things that I, that I guess I, I heard. One was a speaker on Oprah who said, you are either broken open or you willfully shed. And I think it was one of those moments where I was broken open. <laughs> so I ended up leaving and going to work for Monster at that point in time. They were the leader in talent acquisition solutions. I followed the leader that I had worked for for five years. It was amazing. And ultimately, that business unit was disbanded. However, I still was able to get an expertise, more, more understanding and more experience around talent acquisition solutions from the leader in the recruiting industry at that time. After that, I went to work for a company called Diversity Inc. Because diversity management, as I'm sitting here looking at all of these beautiful women in this room, the rise of corporations beginning to really see that there is, that we have an economic power we can create a whole new revenue stream if they pay attention to us, okay? And so I went to work for this leader. And about two years in, I was sitting with the Department of Homeland Security. And they said, at this point, we're having a really difficult time recruiting college students. We're having a really difficult time recruiting minority college students. And I said, well, if you're having that problem, there are other companies that have that problem. And so I decided to create your talent bridge. Three years later, I decided that after having enough experience in this space, that it was time to move forward with creating a recruitment social network, something that could sit in the market between Facebook and LinkedIn. And today, I am now in the process of launching my job connector. And ladies, I really hope to be able to stand in front of you several years from now and be able to say that this is the first 
multi-billion dollar recruitment social network in the social space. And it was also at that moment when I decided to begin building out this business model that that vision came back to me for the first time that I had when I was six. So I know I am absolutely living on purpose. I am living out my destiny. And don't be afraid to say what it is that you really want. I'm tired of looking at, no offense guys, and no offense to the white guys, but I'm tired of looking at all of these white young men that are creating these billion dollar companies. It's time for a woman and someone that looks like us to be able to do that. So thank you. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of the day. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Ms. Buchanan, for demonstrating how we should be able to identify the higher purpose in our challenges. Thank you again. Dana has asked that I share with you that what she's doing right now on the app is that she's sending messages with promotions just for us. Um, so make sure you guys check those things out. Um, all the messages stored um, are in the tabs. And so make sure that, that you, you check those out so that you can um, receive those promotions. Our next panelist is the founder and operator of her own coaching company. Her company's focus is business development and leadership training to assist individuals and organizations in unleashing the leadership giant within. She received her certification training as a speaker, teacher, and coach with the John Maxwell team and is a founding partner of the John Maxwell program. She utilizes the leadership and professional development principles and practices taught by John Maxwell in order to provide exceptional training and resources to her clients. Her passions consist of learning and personal growth, as well as helping others reach their full potential. In addition to her project management professional certification, she holds the Advanced Communicator Bronze and Advanced Leadership Bronze titles within Toastmaster International and has served as the VP of Membership. She remains an active member of her sorority, Delta Sigma Theta Incorporated, and the Clayton Chamber of Commerce, where she is a 2014 Leadership Clayton graduate. She obtained her Bachelor's of Science in Information Systems and Accounting from the University of Arkansas at Fayetteville. She has 15 plus years of experience in corporate America and has served several Fortune 500 companies, including LexisNexis, JP Morgan Chase Bank, Nassau Aerospace, Shell Oil, Exxon, and Hewlett Packard. She is a woman on the move. She is Beverly K. Watson, founder and owner of Beverly K. Watson Coaching LLC. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, good morning. Can, good you, morning. can you guys hear me? Can you all hear me? Yes. Okay. It, it's an honor and a pleasure to be here with you today. And I'm here strictly to serve. And I know that's why God has put us all here to serve others. And we all have purpose. And thank you so much, Miss O'Neill, Sarah, for what you said about dreams and purpose. And that's what I kind of want to expound upon today. Expound upon those dreams and those purposes. My company, we offer leadership development. And I, I said, God, what is it that you have given me? What is it about me that I need to learn? And I had to learn to unleash Beverly. Who is Beverly K. Watson? What am I about? I'm a passionate person. You know, I hear people say, you have so much passion. I'm a very loyal person. And I had to learn me and my makeup. And God said, this is what I made you to be. I said, God, how do you use that? And he starts showing me, even in corporate, how to use that. How do I serve my team? How do I undergird them and serve them? And that's who I am. And today, I want to talk with you about your dreams. See, within us, we have dreams that we must unleash. 
unleash who we are so that we can become what we need to be in this earth. So I have a program that I do and it helps individuals as well as groups take an evaluation about your dream. First of all, I wanna ask you to write down two adjectives to describe a woman on the moon. Just two adjectives. And then I want somebody quickly, one person to jump up and give me those adjectives. Anybody? Sharon. Determined and dedicated. Huh? Say that again. Determined and dedicated. Amen. Determined and dedicated. And who I am, you're gonna hear, you're gonna hear amen and, and praise God. You're gonna hear that I do it in corporate. That's just who I am. So I have to learn to be who I am. Determined and dedicated is what we hear about a woman on the moon. So if you take that, she's moving. In order to be determined and dedicated, she's got to know who she is, right? So how do you know who you are? Know your dreams. I'm going to take two nuggets very quickly from a lesson, a plan that I have, and talk about those things on a dream. First, ownership. When you have a dream, you've got to take ownership of your dream. I think Sarah said it best. She was saying what she wanted to do. She could not align herself with what was going on in corporate. She had to say, I have to step away from that. That takes a big person to do that. So you might want to jot, jot these things down. Take your piece of paper and draw a line. We want to talk about evaluating our dreams. Is it your dream or someone else's dream? Let's just start there. If it's your dream, if it's someone else's dream, it doesn't fit right. And Sarah said it didn't fit right for her. I've been in places where the dream didn't fit right for me. And I had to be, learn how to be a big person and say, this is not the place for me. You have to learn how to do that. But if it's your own dream, if you put on your own dream, it feels right, right? It feels good. It's okay to stay up late at night. You're pumped. You're loving it. Another key thing about somebody else's dream, it weighs on your shoulders. It's a burden. It's not something of passion, something that you really want to do. It's really a burden if it's somebody else's dream. And you have to realize that. But if it's your dream, it's going to provide you your wings to fly. And it won't be easy. It won't be easy, trust me. I moved here eight years ago from Houston, Texas. A company brought me here, laid me off, and everybody said, are you coming back home? Because you, you moved to Atlanta by yourself. I know you're coming back home. No, God brought me here, and he didn't tell me to leave. But through that process, I learned more about Beverly. Like Miss O'Neill, I always wanted to motivate and be a motivational speaker. I didn't know what that was. I always wanted to do leadership training, but I had, a, I had a career in corporate, so I had to keep down that path where I was going. But then God started turning that, turning that path. So as I became a stronger person, a stronger leader, I unleashed it Beverly, it was okay for me to identify what I wanted to do. And it gave me, it, it's giving me the wings that I need. If it's somebody else's dream, it's going to drain you. It's going to drain you. And I don't think I need to say more on that, right? Because we already know what that means. <coughs> but if it's your dream, you're going to be fired up to do it. You're going to be like, yes! That's what I love to do. You're going to stay up late at night doing it. It's going to be so much fun because that's what you really were born to do. But if it's somebody else's dream, it's going to put you to sleep. <laughs> and you may be at your desk and your manager's wondering why haven't you finished that report <laughs> okay I need to get that report out and I will get it out soon <laughs> amen but again if it's yours it's going to keep you up at night it feels great if it's somebody else's dream it's going to take you out of your strength zone so you always want to be out of your comfort zone, but maintain in your strength zone. 
Because at the end of your comfort zone, that's when you really get light, but you're still within your strength zone. And trust me, within your, within your strength zone, you're gonna be challenged. You're gonna have all kind of challenges, but you're gonna know that that thing is for you. And if it's somebody else's dream, it's gonna be fulfilling them and their purpose. And people are gonna always see your talents and say, oh, well, Beverly's pretty good at that. I'm gonna get her to do this and this and this and this. And they'll take you out of your strength zone. They want you to do everything because you're good at what, you're good at some things. We have our strengths and we need to surround ourselves with others who are stronger in areas that we're not. <laughs> okay? I am solid. So you have to learn to stay within your strength zone and you will grow. If it's, your, if it's your dream, of course it's gonna fulfill you. But by fulfilling you, guess what? You're gonna be able to help others. Like I said, I'm strictly here to serve. I have to learn that people always want me to do everything else. God has made me to serve others. And that's what I do. And so in learning that, it's okay. And I'm fulfilled because I can help others to be fulfilled. If it's somebody else's dream, it requires others to make you do it. It's okay, don't feel bad because when you're at work, you're not the best person at a certain task or a certain thing. That is not for you. It may not be for you. Because if it is for you, you'll feel like you were made to do it. I feel like I was made to do what I do because that's who I am. So that, those are key nuggets that I wanted to share with you about your dream. And the other key nugget that I want to share with you is significance. Ownership, owning your dream. And the other key nugget is significance. It's got to benefit other people. Your dream cannot be all about you. We all have dreams, but they must benefit other people. And we, I, I'm sure we all can say in this room, as we've evolved to the place where we're going, we can see that we are helping others. We can see, from, see that happening in our lives. So with that, I wanted to leave you with a couple key nuggets of a program that I share, and those are ownership and significance. If you're interested in the program, we can talk more about that later. But because there's much more to that. But as you evolve in who you are, you want to put your dream to the test. You want to be a person on the moon. And no matter where you are and what's happening, it's okay. Because you know one key thing about everything in life, you'll learn. Every path along your journey in life will aid you. It's going to aid you as you move towards your destination. Everything, the good and the bad. And with that said, I'll turn it back over to our moderator. Thank you. Thank you again, Ms. Watson, for reminding us that our dreams are reminders that we should fulfill our own personal purpose in life. Ladies and gentlemen, I have another reminder um, here that you can go on to the app and give a shout out to McNair Productions. Let everybody know what they're missing here um, this morning. What I'm gonna do at this time is bring up our next panelist. She is an award-winning author and wealth coach. She is an entrepreneur, author, inspirational speaker, and real estate guru. Her niche is helping people move from everyday living to wealth building. She is an award-winning author of the bestseller, Real Estate and Wealth, Investing in the American Dream and its New Edition. While owning an all-state insurance agency at the age of 24, she began using her profits from that business to purchase investment property, thereby quickly discovering her passion for real estate. She soon sold her insurance agency to invest in real estate full time. She first captured national attention in 2002 when she appeared in Black Enterprise. She has also appeared in Upscale, Atlanta Voice, Booking Matters, and Rolling Out Magazine. 
Her knowledge and business experience enables her to continuously inform, inspire, and engage others to define and enjoy wealth for themselves. A Jackson, Mississippi native, she grew up around real estate investors and entrepreneurs. Since 2006, she has worked with her mentor and friend, Herman J. Russell of H.J. Russell and Company, who founded one of the largest real estate construction and management companies in the Southeast. She has partnered and worked hand in hand on condo conversion projects, hotels, and other commercial properties. She is passionate about the advancement of women and founded the Inner Circle Women's Investor Association, a group of progressive women who share a common interest in building wealth and leaving a legacy. A wife, mother, and involved community leader, she understands the demands of women and the multitasking required to positively impact both the family and the community. She is a woman on the move. She is Sonia Booker. Join me in celebrating her movement. Good morning. Good morning. How's everybody doing? Good it's a good looking room. Very good looking room. So this morning I want to speak with you about failure. I know, right? It goes from all the glitz and glam of success. But how many of you know that falling forward is actually a good thing? How many of you know that Sometimes it takes some failures to get to your true success. That's right. So although I may be a little vulnerable standing here sharing with you failure, I don't know you, right. telling you about my failures and, and my stuff, but yet it's very empowering. It's empowering to do that. So I want to talk about a span that's about a 14 uh, year window for me. So from about 2000 to 2014. In 2007, I had a staggering failure. It was as if I hit a brick wall. The type of failure that you really don't think you can recover from. But those type of failures really begin to test who you are. And you're going to understand in just a minute why me having a failure, a professional failure, a business to go under, a business to fail, was such a big deal for me. Not only did the business go under, it was very costly. It was legal fees and fines and all the money involved with a business going under. And it was also a business relationship, a partnership, and sometimes those relationship losses hurt worse than the pocket losses. So that was a big brick wall for me. And I thought, you know, where do I go from here? It was the kind that gets your attention. So in 1999, 2000, here I am at 24 years old, one of the youngest Allstate insurance agents. Built a very successful insurance agency one of the top agents in the state of Georgia, award-winning, recognized type agent. So I knew how to build a business. Understanding that at that point, success for me was when opportunity meets preparation. Always remember that. For me to become the youngest insurance agent was because of the preparation that I made prior to that. I had my first job. It was my only job that I had. And I saved all of my money. I lived very modest. I lived in a one bedroom apartment. And I saved money. And at that time, corporate America was matching and doing all kinds of stuff and 401ks. And if you were matching it, I had my money in it. I wanted all the match. I wanted all the free money. Make sure you get all the free money. So to live very modest in this one bedroom apartment and to save my money, when I would leave the company and move to Atlanta, not knowing anyone, 
I moved here, and I went to the powers to be and said, I want to start an insurance agency. I don't know what the look was, too young, too dark, you know, I'm not sure. But it didn't fit the mold. It didn't fit the idea of coming to these powers to be at 24 saying, I want to own my own insurance agency. What do I need to do, I asked. They said, well, you have to show that you can sustain yourself for a year. You have to be liquid. You have to have money in the bank. You have to show that you can run an agency and have money to put in there for a year. So I looked and I said, okay, I'll be back in a couple days. <laughs> I came back in a couple days. I had all my statements because I had all this money I saved. So I was able to show, here you go, what's next? Okay, we find your location, we go through this process. So being a top agent, then selling a business, taking a business from zero to a business that was valued to sell was exhilarating. There's no feeling like it to sell a business. So I would sell that business and go on to be very successful in real estate. And that time, the markets were great. Everything was going wonderful. Made lots of money. Awesome. Real estate, I love. So in 2007, having this failure was such a big deal. Up until that point, a failure for me was, ah, can't get out of bed this morning. This is a tough day. You know, I'm going to try again, maybe 12 o'clock. Maybe I can do it by 12. Pull the cover back over your head up. You know, I just can't do it today. That, that was my idea of my little failures. But having something major happen. So at that 2007 time was during the whole mortgage debacle, the whole real estate debacle, the, the, the crash of the real estate market. But yet I felt very unscathed by what was happening. It was as if I had been picked up and taken out and set over to the side. And I was watching everything about an industry that I knew everything about as if I was not there, I was never there. I was completely protected from what was happening. Later that year, I became pregnant. And I thought, this is pretty cool. I'm just gonna be a stay-at-home mom. I'm gonna, you know, just hang out with my kid. So for three years, I decided to not do anything. I was on playgrounds, I was at the swimming pool, I was hanging out. It's great. Living off interest. That's pretty cool too. And rental payments. So knowing that I was able to do that. I, was, I have what's called a type A personality, I've been told. I don't really know what that means. But what I do know about myself is that when I put my mind to something, when I focus on something, that's what I give my all to. So it was no different when I became a mother. I wanted to take it all in. Because everybody always said, it's going to go by so fast. It's the best thing you'll ever experience. And you think, all these mushy people, it ain't all that. I mean, it can't be all that. And then you have a little one and you think, wow, this is all of that. So I wanted to spend all of my time being a mother. And then all of a sudden, he turned three years old. And I figured he should get more social <laughs> skills and I probably should take him to, you know, be with other kids. And I dropped him off. He cried, I cried. And I turned down the parking lot and I thought, well, where am I going? What am I doing? I've been at the playground for three years. Where am I going now? So I'll never forget, in, in 2013, I became very intentional about 
what's next for me? What's next? And like Sarah said, God had been talking to me and he had been telling me some real big things that I didn't believe. And in 2013, April, during Lent season, I got in God's face and I said, I want to know. It's very prayerful. Like Miss Lucille said, God know how to pray. Stay on your knees and pray some more. And that's what I did. And God revealed some things to me that were it's very enlightening because all of what I thought was success prior to then was nothing. It was just me doing my own thing. It was just me. So when God got my attention and he said, okay, I'm going to tell you what's next. You ready? You want to know? He said to me, do you think that you were born into a real estate entrepreneurial family by accident? Do you think that all those trips with your grandfather, going collecting rent money, insurance payments, do you think that was all by accident? Do you think that you moved to a city that you didn't know anybody and had enough money to start an insurance business? Do you think that was by accident? You wrote a best-selling book wasn't even good in English. <laughs> Do you think that was by accident? You get here and sit at the feet of the most successful real estate person, H.J. Russell, Herman Russell of all times. You think that that was by accident? No, I guess not. So Sonia, what you're gonna do is you're going to create a wealth movement. And when you know you've heard from God, it's because it's too big and it's nothing you would have ever spoke. You're going to create a wealth movement that will change the way that people view and see their wealth building. Wow. Wow. To know that every day I get up, and I'm given a gift to be able to write, say, impact someone's life. To be at a grocery store and someone come up to you and say, what you said has made a difference in my life, in my financial future. I'm now building a legacy. I'm now leaving generational wealth for my family. That is absolutely awesome and exciting. Exciting to know that you're affecting other people's lives. Because like Beverly said, it is not about me. It's about how I can use my talents, my gifts, to affect other people and to affect the kingdom of God, more importantly. So I want to leave you with something out of a book that is entitled Success. And it's written by Deepak Shapura. To me, success is the ability to love and to have compassion. It's the capacity to experience joy and spread it to others. It's the security of knowing that your life has meaning and purpose. It is a sense of connection to a creative power of the universe. It's also the ability to fulfill your goals. It's the progressive realization of worthy goals. It's also the expansion of happiness. When you have all of that, then material success in terms of material acquisitions and comforts and luxury follows as a byproduct. Thank you so much for your time this morning. Thank you, Ms. Booker, for such a motivational example of how what happens when preparation meets opportunity. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, I'm going to bring up our final panelists who would only approve the following bio. 
She is a mother, she is a grandmother, and she is saved. She is a woman on the move. She is the Honorable Dr. Sister Mayor Evelyn Lynn Dixon. Thank you. I, I didn't think y'all need to hear all that stuff about me because that ain't what's important today. What is important is what we walk away with. Uh, my sisters who preceded me, Spelmanites and all that, I went to state school. <laughs> I went to Georgia State, Metropolitan, UGA. <laughs> I had them got money. <laughs> but the reason that's so significant is that however we get to our point, is our destiny. That's our purpose. And we have to get the mindset that how bad do you want it? That you'll do what you got to do. I don't have no real estate and all of that stuff. Girl, I'm bringing up the real with what life is about for women like me back in the day. And for women who are, I'm going to be real with you. No shame. So I could beat that girl before she hang, put up that sign talking about pause and stop. <laughs> <laughs> what I want to tell you today is that life makes changes so quickly in your life. And we have to be aware that we have to make own conscious informed decisions, decisions in our life to make it. Because when you make that decision wrong, when your subconscious tell you don't do it, I want to see a show of hands. How many of you have ever made a bad decision and you heard your conscience say, don't do it, girl. <laughs> don't do it, don't do it. And when we do it, we go, no. Something told me not to do it. But I'm transparent today and I'm gonna be very quick that I've learned how to move swiftly, though I walk slow. <laughs> it's the fact that you can have the greatest dreams and aspirations. You can have family connection. But then you got the women like me who didn't have nobody but Jesus and your grandma now. When no change flow. But the one thing that we need to instill in the young girls, as I hope I'm going to say girls, the young girls, I didn't care if you were light, small, whatever, is that when you make those decisions, can you work with them? Can you how you get up after you fall? That makes the difference. That's what we used to learn after HYPU on Sunday. <laughs> when everybody was made to go to Sunday school and the church. And they taught us that couldn't nobody put our name on the stop sign unless we allow it. People treat you like your dress. And we don't teach that no more. I ain't talking about nobody with tags, but I'm a mayor of this city and I'm gonna tell you what can happen. You're free to get tags. That's your money. And that's America. But what is the consequences when you don't get that job? When you go to get married and they looking at you and people pre have ideas that you a thug or you live a thug life. That's right. That you can't get a policeman job, military, none of those. No more. We don't teach that. We don't teach young girls that when you go for that job interview, you don't wear that skirt up to your behind that if you bend over, I'm going to see your empty. We don't teach that no more. We don't teach no more that how you walk up and eat and how you... If you ain't got but one dress, wash it. <laughs> Ask me how I know. I lived it. Do we teach our young girls how to prepare for war in times of peace? We don't teach that no more. If we're going to bring the girls together today, let's tell them the real life about women. <laughs> you got these young babies up here can tell you about all the other stuff to get business. I didn't grow up in that. I grew up in the fact that if you didn't have nothing to eat after my husband left me with four children and I was homeless on welfare, had not mom and them taught me how to make buttermilk biscuits, do peach preserves, 
If you had to eat some fat back, put it in the oven, bless it in Jesus' name. Eat it anyhow. Grandma and them showed us that they didn't throw nothing away. They made quilts as entrepreneurs. They could go out and feel and grow the fruits and vegetables, come in and eat it. Children learn to respect. Who remember that if you walked away and you were thinking something, you might have got a shoe in the back. And you thought your mama was clairvoyant. How she know what I was saying? <laughs> It's good for all the young girls to have aspirations, but what aspiration? Everybody can't be a Beyonce. I don't frankly she thinks she can sing that good, but she can move. <laughs> what values are we teaching young ladies? All of you. Who have you captured in your neighborhood or your church? Even in your family. They may not receive it, but you'll get a blessing for telling. Amen. Look at me. Amen. Homeless on welfare. It used to be fine, good. Thought I had the world in the palm of my hand. But because I didn't love myself better than that and got pregnant along the way and married my best friend that I didn't love, we need to tell young girl, don't be fooled by these dudes. That's right. Don't. Because I was engaged and he had my best friend pregnant. We had our babies a day apart. Shut the front door, for real. <laughs> when I tell you that I had to learn to grow, to, to get the strength to get up, you can say get up, but sometimes it's hard to get up. When I tell you, young ladies, when you start your business, have your eyes, but keep your vision on Jesus. And know that every day ain't going to be a good day. But if you can get up in the mirror and look at yourself and say, I am somebody. I can be what I want to be. Ain't nobody stopping me but me. And stop being on a pity party that I got on when I got full, voluptuously full figured. And then no man want a woman with four children. And I had to learn to love myself again. But I tell you, once you get up and you can walk, all right, I saw you. Uh, when I get up, <laughs> I told you I was from summer here, baby. I ain't gonna miss it. <laughs> when I tell you when I got up, got off the pity party, and how bad I wanted it, couldn't take no days off, and had to be a water walker. When I tell you that when I did do that, I started being a woman on the move. Who would have ever thought a homeless welfare food stamp section eight? Chick running the court to somebody else to get lights and gas. Running an electric heater sometimes to cook your food. That I walk from Georgia State to Cleveland Avenue. How bad do you want it? How bad do you want it that when you go in the store with the food stamp, they say, look at that bee taking my food stamp money. But I was using the system to get off the system. But when our own people was our worst enemy, I got the greatest hurt in the church. But when you lift yourself up and teach your children, nobody owes you nothing. Your zip code don't make you. Your environment don't make you. If you believe and trust in God, even if you don't see it, know that it can come. When I tell y'all, look at my children now. I got kids played at the University of Georgia, graduated both of them academic all American from a welfare mom. Both played pro. George is an attorney for the Gators, and William graduated from Harvard with his MPA over the state. My daughter got her PhD working on it. But then I got one that was shot 17 times. 10 years in prison, but he out now. God still got the go. He got a job now. He's very fast for God got his degree. So what I'm telling you today, ladies, in order to get to where you get, you got to get the foundation right. You got to understand who you are and where you come from. My mama's name was Sarah, an American Indian, and my, my, my daddy was gross. See, I don't have to get no perm shut up. <laughs> hey. But when I tell you today, I am a mayor 
of the city of Riverdale. I'm on three major boards now. I'm over the state of Georgia for GMA on the southeast side. I'm on the governor's board, twice appointed, $6.5 billion budget. I'm over the black mayors. I got more awards than I could ever think. But at the end of the day, none of that matters. What matters is that when I used to sleep with the rats, biggest cats, and stay up all night to protect my baby, fighting with the roaches, at the end of the day, it was just that God took a time for an opportunity to me for come tell somebody today that if you down, if you remember, God is able to do anything but fail. Oh my, what an awesome example of, it's not how you fall, but how you get up. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time we're going to open the floor for questions of our panel. And so if you have a question for our panel, ask that you raise your hand. And do we have another mic? We need to use this one. We got another mic? Okay. And so, Ms. O'Neill has a question. Hey, Vincent, I have to say that when I first met you, just looking at you, you reminded me of some of my um, relatives in New Jersey. The village, as we know it, has crumbled in a whole lot of places, but I want to just tell you that you have inspired me in so many ways. And I want to ask you, what really motivated you to want to become mayor of this city in Riverdale? What inspired you from the inside to want to be able to be in a position to make a difference in this community and help build the village back up as we, some of us, know it to have been before? Well, I never desired to be a, a servant in politics, never ever. I was at work um, and I uh, had a PhD in gerontology medicine and case management. And a nurse came in and said she had a vision and a dream that I was in the book with Coretta Scott King. And I said, girl, you better get a clue and get on the fire. <laughs> uh, but in essence, I ended up in all the 100 most influential women. And, uh, being on the Marie Shriver show and CNN and all of those, it happened just like she dreamed. But that Sunday I went to church and my pastor said, Sister Evelyn, stand up. He said, you're going to be the mayor of Riverdale next year. I said, what in the world? <laughs> and he told me that December the 16th, December the 17th of the next year, uh, I was sworn in as mayor. But it came from doing community advocacy. I promise God, if you get me off this welfare section eight, and let my children make it. I'll make my life a magnificent obsession, helping others so they don't have to be like me. So I, I don't mind that they call me the welfare uh, mayor because people being domestic abused and all of those things, homeless, like they come right there in that little corner office and I don't care. And I don't mind hugging the homeless. I don't mind hugging those who dirt. I don't mind any of that because God said if I do it in his name, he'll protect me. Yes. So I, I just like being a servant. Yes. That, and, and meeting people. And that, that does me more good when I'm in the store and somebody say, hey man, Jason, thank you. I heard what you said and now I'm on welfare. That's the victory for me. But once you have the, your, your purpose and you understand that determination, 
that you need in building your business. That will all fall in place. What I would say, the biggest thing is to have mentors, to get mentors for what you're doing and for the business that you're looking to grow. That has been the most rewarding um, part of developing a business, to learn from other people. So that's, yeah, thank you. I believe we had a question right here. Uh, good morning, everybody. Good and morning. I just, uh, echo that. I'm just over the moon right now, so thank y'all for everything. Uh, my question is, um, I'm afraid and feeling overwhelmed by the love of technology. Yes, ma'am. So, you know, if I hear about another social media platform, <laughs> I'm <laughs> So how are y'all, I'd like to hear from each of you how you're uh, navigating the technology way because I'm hearing all these car stores and people that are on these platforms that who's I'm saying we say my finger, somebody else is supposed to send it to you or you know, so we have these devices but we don't really know how to use them properly. So how are our car each of you managing that? I'm going to tell you, babe, I just learned three years ago how to answer my email. <laughs> and I said, why do you really keep making my phone go boom, boom? <laughs> So I'm honest, I went to my grandchildren. Oh, they taught me everything. <laughs> then the city clerks taught me how to do my stuff on that. So I do use social media as a way to generate information to my citizens. And they talk to me on there, the kids who finish high school. Um, I use Twitter uh, and my Yahoo. But it's worked great for me. But I had someone to teach me. But I don't go through no whole lot of in-depth stuff. And, you go this, I don't shop and buy shoes on social media. I don't do none of that. I just, if a citizen send me a question, I'll learn how to answer them back. Quick, short, and hurry. And I do check my text messages now. I even know how to send one. So, so that's it for me. It's nothing um, mesmeric about what I do on social media, but I can understand what you're saying. And, and with social media, the one thing I did learn, when people want to Facebook free you, I started looking at the names and how they sent certain stuff, and I don't, I don't friend them. I said not now. Yeah. And then if I get one that send me something stupid like that man from Australia, girl, you ain't gonna believe this. <laughs> you are beautiful. Yeah. I want, I want to um, yeah. marry you. You got and told me I want to come in it. Said, boy, you look young. I'm old enough to be your mom. And he'll still right back. Well, I like older women. I, I believe. <laughs> I just want to comment as well. There are tools out there that you can use stuff like called Hootsuite so that you can connect LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, and you can actually you can actually schedule when um, your your updates go out so you can use those kind of tools also. But just keep in mind the most important thing is human interaction. So even though we have all these tools, you still want to have a human connection with people. Um, you want to manage, you want to post, you want to share things, and, and that's all great. But also making those human connections are very important. So just look at some of the tools that you can use. You don't have to use everything. Just figure out what you want to use and just kind of focus. If it's Facebook, if it's just Twitter, start there and try not to get overwhelmed over everything because they're going to always keep changing. Okay, we have time for one last question. And just let me say we're going to have some presenters on the social media um, aspect of it, okay? And, um, Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Bonita Estridge, and I just recently found it. It's called Jay Z Divine Faith Senior Ministries, also known as Jay Z Best and Holly Favor. All right. Um, anyone on the panel um, can answer this. Mayor, uh, about a year ago, I approached people more about trying to set up an organization. For the most part, what our organization does is work with seniors who've been in assisted living facilities, nursing homes, and they don't want to be in these homes. They want to remain in their homes with some sort of assistance. And I got the idea through my mom, who's very stubborn about this. And the first thing is more to me, well, the public or no, she told me the staff is not going to accept it. It's not a profit organization. I was considering the those property up there. 
And I have to remind her, it's, it's not with the staff things, it's with the city residents. It, it starts with the residents, what they, um, what they vote on. And so I've been running from door to door. I've actually met with individuals in the uh, head of Peggy County. I'm trying to establish what is the best way to get this out there where we can get any sort of power. Okay. Like Mayor, maybe um, you want to answer that privately if you can. I don't mind asking the public, but, um, <laughs> but it, I'm, just, it, I'm not going to be whatever. I'm just going to let them know that if you want to come and see me okay. and talk about that, Go to my web page and, and, and then set up an appointment with me on www.riverdellega.gov. Um, and I see everybody, anybody who's been here, know me, your mom, to everybody, I have open door policy. I'll be happy to answer you uh, in regards to that because there are some very serious reasons why you may not can do some of those things. And the last thing, that's 133,000 square feet at Lowe's. So I need to talk to you about that, um, five point five million dollars. So I, I'll call you because you set up an appointment with me at my office, and ma'am, I'll be more than honored to help you. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you all. Okay. She, right she, she was waiting patiently in the gold jacket okay. right here. She and was, this like, will be the, li the last questions, ladies and gentlemen. Um, go ahead. Hey, my name is Jackie Harmon, and I'm moving from Mississippi. Oh. And um, all I have is a dream and a promise from the Lord. Come on, that's and good. my question is, how do you go about getting funded for your business? Any of you can ask. It's probably one of the most difficult things that you will do. Um, I'll start off with bad news. Women receive less than 10 percent, on actually 7 percent of all the angel and venture capital funding. African Americans receive 1 percent. So the most important thing that you've got to know is that if you've got a promise from the Lord that everything will show up for you. You may not necessarily always like the ways that it shows up for you, but I will say this. For the past two years as I've watched and developed this recruitment social network platform, I have no idea how to write an algorithm. I have no idea how to do all the stuff that I'm doing, but what I can tell you unequivocally is that at every single step of the process, everything has shown up exactly at the right time. So, but there are a number of things that you can do regarding funding. I would absolutely recommend looking at an accelerator program if you're looking for, for investment capital. Um, so you, there are a number of different accelerators that, that you can identify. Um, there's Startup Chicks. There's, there are a number of different programs, but Google that. And, and certainly also do your homework about um, what you need to do to become what they call investor ready. And I'm happy to share that with you because that's part of the route that, that I've gone. Um, so anyone else in the room that, that's looking to go you know, the investment route and raise capital, I'm happy to share that with you. I'm sure that Sonia also has, you know, she sounds like you've used. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I have. So definitely connect with me after because one of the things that I always get is that women can't get capital and my solution is we're going to raise our own capital to fund our own businesses and women. So make sure that you connect because we're going to be doing a crowdfund and I'm an investor in some crowdfunding uh, that funds women businesses in particular. There's a, well, there's one thing that just happened last week. A gentleman came in with a, with a legitimate new uh, company that get new companies like you start up as a loan company uh, I would be more than happy to share that information with you and he just came last week okay. and you gonna be his first referral from me okay. <laughs> all right so what's gonna happen now our panel is from session two have agreed to sacrifice the reading of their bios because there's still those of you who have questions so let's thank them for that first of all Right now, whooping uh, children. Um, 
where I'm coming from, I'm coming from Africa, where when your mom slap you or your teacher slap you, when you go back home, you tell to your mom, my teacher slap me. Your mom slap you some more. That's right. That's how we have been raised because when you do wrong, you need to know that what you did is wrong. Confession is these uh, players that are on TV right now, they don't they don't have any uh, money or they put in them where they are not, they are pretty much belonging there because I'm I'm sure that they didn't mean to tell the children. But what do you think? What do, what do we have to do? Our we not I have four children. What do we do to to raise our children in the right way? With all the media, with all the people that are trying to teach you how to raise your children. Hmm? What do you think you should do? They're passing well, the mic. They, yeah, they pass with me. <laughs> <laughs> being recorded, anything that you say can and maybe you can. <laughs> Let's do a door prize. Let's get somebody. Gentlemen left in the room. Gentlemen. 
I'm Yolanda Buford, President and Chief Executive Officer of the Clayton County Chamber of Commerce, and I'm delighted to welcome our new people in Clayton County, to Clayton County and the City of Riverdale. Our old timers who are always here, welcome to you as well. And I bring greetings on behalf of the Clayton County Chamber of Commerce, a business organization in Clayton County that serves as the voice for business in our county, a chamber that is run by lots of women. Yes. And we let the men feel like they do stuff too. <laughs> But I just want to just provide just a few remarks, and I want to make sure to keep us back on task with the program. But if you are not aware, your Clayton County Chamber of Commerce provides a Women in Business Council. We saw the need as a chamber over eight years ago to address our women in business. Ms. O'Neill has graciously been one of our speakers at our annual luncheon. Mayor Dixon serves as one of our illustrious Business Women of the Year. We have a mentoring program that's a part of that, and I heard mentoring come up often, and we understand and see the value of that, and have a structured program as a part of building up our business women within our county. Events, programs, services, the list goes on and on, because we realize the power of women, and as a chamber, we're only one of the only ones within this metro region that addresses our women in business. So feel free to visit our website. Actually, we have notepads that we left with you today that have our website address, you can get additional information about our council. If I can have Crystal Black stand up and wave as well. She is our vice president, and she oversees that program. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. And then, of course, I could not make, forget to make a comment about Ms. McNair. Kim has been a part of our Women in Business Council since she moved into this area, joined the chamber, then became involved in the council. She has been a facilitator for our mentoring program. She has been speakers and moderators at various events. And then she took it a step further and became a supporter, financial supporter of our program, both her and Ms. O'Neill throughout the years. And I publicly just want to say thank you both so very much. So if you are not involved in your local chamber, if you don't live in Clayton County, I suggest you look at your chamber where you are. If they're not progressive like your Clayton County Chamber of Commerce, then I suggest you come talk to us. We are here to serve our business women. We're here to serve business in Clayton County. That is what we do on a daily basis, to provide you with those resources. I look forward to working with each and every one of you. Enjoy the rest of our conference. Thank you so much. All right, ladies and gentlemen, at this time, is this the book? Yeah, oh, okay, yeah, page 103, okay. Uh-huh, is this the book? Page 103? Let me see, I've heard so much about it. Page 103, I'm almost there. And then um, Miss O'Neill is probably gonna be back in the room by the time I'm done. Wow, okay. So we have Reflections of Style, and guess who's in it? Miss McNair, all right, on page 103. So I'm sure if you go out and get your copy, you can hunt her down to sign it, okay? Um, at this time, we're going to go ahead and seat our panelists for our second session. And again, we really appreciate each of them for so graciously waving um, the reading of their bios. Um, so that you could ask more questions. And so um, we want to express to them how appreciative we, we are of that. Ms. O'Neill will be seated on this panel and wherever she comes in, she's just going to take her seat. You heard from her a little earlier. Joining her, we have CEO Emeritus of the Ryan Cameron Foundation. And she's going to come now and give her presentation. She served as the CEO for many years, positioning this organization for sustainability. She's a mother, and she, of course, is the wife of Ryan Cameron. Ms. Cameron, if you come now. Place this back up here. Oh, I might not be good at this. There we go. I think. Okay. Hello, everybody. Hello. Um, disclosure. First of all, I'm so excited to be here. I love to be amongst my sisters. And um, I've got to tell you, while I've been sitting here, I've totally 
decided I'm going to talk about something completely different than I've been planning for the last month. Um, and I think it's really important because I like to follow spirit. And so I want to share with you uh, some things that, that I felt today and that I felt I wanted to share with you. And they are, first I'd like for us all to just take a minute um, to contemplate the fact that you live the life you give. If everybody can say that with me, you live the life you give. Thank you. And I think we get it because we're sitting here today. You know, it's not about what you can take. It's not about, it's, it's about what you give and how the universe works and, and what you have to do and what you have to invest and working hard. And, and so I think by all, it's all just being here, you know, that, that we, we understand that. But would you say, and I'm going to ask you guys a, uh, a question by a show of hands, I'd like to know who considers themselves a giver and who considers themselves a taker. So if we can have the givers raise their hands. I knew that would happen. And if we can have the takers raise their hands. That's actually more hands than I was anticipating. I've got lots of angels, and I've got angels on earth, and they're my, ment my mentors. And I'll never forget, I have a, a mentor, and I, I, I tease her. Um, I say, in my another life, you know, in a past life, I was, you know, I was your sister. We were, you know, it, it, she's Jewish, and we just have a ball together. And she teaches me Hebrew, and we, we have so much fun. But she gave me a gift one day, and it was a book by author and um, Dr. Jill Kahn, and it was The Gift of Taking. And it, it was startling because I think we all as women, you know, can't allow ourselves to put ourselves most times in that, in that role as a taker. But it was such an incredible read. It was so profound and so impactful to me. I think one of the things that I do want to share from that that changed my perspective immediately when I began to read the book was a passage that talked about a tree. And it asked the question, it posed the question, is a tree a giver or is a tree a taker? Anybody have any thoughts? Anybody want to share? Uh, no. Exactly, exactly. Okay, well, I, w I wasn't that open-minded. You know, for me, you know, I immediately went into a tree gives you oxygen, it gives you sun, it might give you fruit, it might give you nut. you know, I'm thinking all the things that it's giving because Let's be honest, that's how, I was, that's how I was raised. That was my family, that was my culture. That was, you know, that, that is oftentimes the nature of what a woman is in our role. And what I realized is that before a tree could give you any of those things, it had to take. It had to take sunlight, it had to take water. And I, what I took from that, that, that has impacted me so tremendously, along with my angels, um, is that we have to take care of ourselves. And to take care of ourselves, we have to take. And before we can give, which is what we all do and what we probably all do very easily at all second, we have to take, we have to take, we have to feed our souls. We are not, you know, and, and, and I got this from the Oprah weekend too, but I, I, I live by prior to, and that is we're, we're spiritual creatures having an earthly experience. If you are not taking care of your mind, your body, and your spirit, and all of the above, you're not at your best. You can't be for anyone else before you can be for you. And so I really, I thought I was gonna come and talk a lot about, you know, the part of the, the nonprofit and, and being involved in giving and, and that, but I, I really needed and felt like I really needed to say that to so many people, I'm sorry, to so many people today because, um, I think, by, I think by nature, that, that's who we are. And I think sometimes it's to a fault. And ladies, we gotta take care of ourselves. We have to take care of ourselves. I recently, and let me just say this, I don't, I recently went and sat with, I had a pleasure of meeting a financial planner. And you know, I get cards and stuff all the time. And you know, I, I sift through them. But a lot of times I'll give my time, to, sometimes just to figure out if I'm gonna give you any more of my time. <laughs> you know, like, let's just go ahead and eliminate it. Is this gonna be a good, you know, a good relationship or not and so I met a financial advisor she was a female and I had met her maybe six times before I was like okay I will just go talk to her and we sat and I and it was just me because I had to you know do my groundwork before I invited my husband to meet her and all this and 
she, she let me talk and she asked me all these incredible questions about myself and you know, you know how we do it. She got right to it. She says, oh, so you're a giver. I said, yes, you know, and she's like, of all of your time. And I broke out in tears because she was absolutely right, you know. It was, it was so profound. And so I guess what I, what I got from that experience is the things that bring me the greatest joy, the things, sometimes I do them too much. You know, sometimes I do them at the, at, to the point where it, it's a detriment to me or my, my spirit or my soul or my goals or my, you know, what I have to do or and achieve. So I take all of that as the lead in to talk about nonprofit work. Um, and I call it service. I, you know, the bottom line is um, I stumbled into the formality of a nonprofit organization. You know, I didn't go out and, and found a nonprofit. I decided, oh, I can help, you know. Um, I, I didn't have a, um, a, a lot of the guidelines that I give people now for, oh, this is how you can get started, and this is, you know, think about these questions. I just kind of fell into it in that I thought, I can help, you know. I, I, let me take some of my corporate experience in marketing and sales. I'll help you, you know, secure your funds and strategic partners, and before you know it, I was completely, utterly sucked in, and I loved it, you know. Um, but some of the things that I want you to um, to talk about, or I wanted to share as it related to the world of nonprofit, is that that's my other note. Sorry, <laughs> is that I'm often approached by people in so many ways and so many capacities in life, and um, I have the opportunity to just share. I have. My most pleasure comes out of mentoring. And um, what I want to say on that note is that mentoring can be very informal these days. Um, you know, everybody asks, oh, can we, or can we, you know, we used to meet and we used to do all these things. You can, I, I saw something on Facebook or on social media this past week where you can tell that Kobe has literally studied Michael Jordan down to the moves, down to his postures, down to he puts his jersey in his mouth, and his pitch, and, and, and I say that to say, you can study people. You don't have to have, so, so know that ladies, that when you go into these opportunities or you think you wanna be involved in, take those first steps by studying something from afar, because you never, you have no idea how close you can get and how much you can achieve by even viewing and watching from afar. I wanna say that, um, when I, when I meet people who most often the question is, I, I want to be involved, I want to do something, but where do I start? And to that, I wanna share with you all that there should all be a place in our lives for giving. It really should be. And when I say giving, I mean reaching back and helping at all times without a second thought, without a, a, um, a guideline, without restrictions. Um, you, you have no idea the impact that you're having on lives. And it's nothing like when it comes full circle. Um, volunteering is something that delivers people from places that I couldn't even begin to, to explain. Um, when I, people are unemployed, when they can't, don't have money to go back to school, when they don't have places to do, I invite them to volunteer because the world changes. The world is no longer, the moment is no longer about you. Now there's somebody who needs you and your whole world, a light shines, a light shines. The other thing I say about volunteering is that I encourage you all to find a cause that you're um, interested and very passionate about. And I don't wanna say find one, but you know, a lot of people are kind of too broad with it. You can pray on it. That person will find you, it'll, it'll come to you. You know, I, I just encourage us all. I think people overthink the process of just taking that step and reaching out and extending that hand. I want to also say that you have to be sincere. Sincerity is such a, a, a gift. It, it, it's when you want to be there for somebody. When you don't want to let somebody down. When somebody's counting on your call or your response or your text. Be sincere about your intention to do whatever you can do for somebody. Whatever that is. Whatever that feels like, looks like. Um, I also wanted to talk to you and share with you that I think it's important in this process to do what you say you're gonna do. There are a lot, I, I've served in a capacity of CEO for eight years for a youth non-service, I mean, youth service nonprofit. And you can't let a kid down. 
You know, I don't, I don't, there's, there's no other way to say it, but I cannot let a kid down. If I say I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. And if I, if I have that approach with a, a youth, I need to have that approach in every aspect of my life is what I've learned. You know, and, and the words that we live by, my husband and I have a bunch of phrases, some of which I can't repeat, um, you know, that we kind of joke back and forth, you know, but you, say, do what you say you're going to do. When you are out there and you're giving and you're serving and you're, and you're part of a bigger community, stay committed. You can't, you can't do it, don't commit. Don't do it. I, I'm teaching my daughter now who's in a new school and it's middle school and she's trying to find her way and I said, I can't believe you didn't sign up for the newspaper. Not, you know, I know we're not talking service, but I said, you didn't sign up for the newspaper. You're a great creative writer. She's completely intimidated and it's gonna miss the opportunity because she doesn't realize she can just put a toe in. She can just do a little bit. She doesn't have to go in and sign up to be the president or the lead, right? You know, and, and that's what I encourage all of you to do is to go ahead and just, just do a little something for somebody else, you know? Um, I, that, that's just, and then I, I guess in, really in conclusion, I just wanted to talk about intention. It kind of to me speaks and aligns itself with sincerity. You know, there's a lot of intention out here. You know, sometimes we don't find out intentions till years later. And I mean years, you know. Sometimes the lessons are hard, you say, wow, but you know, I, you know. Intention is everything. Be there because you want to be there. Be there because you're not looking for something in return. Be there because you have a gift to offer, because you have a smile, because you love a kid because you love your community, because your school needs you, your church needs you. Be there. So, inclusion, I just wanted to share with you guys. I know they have me listed when I um, had the pleasure of meeting Kim. I, and she asked me about this program, I had the pleasure of saying, well, I've recently stepped down from CEO and, and I'm no longer officially with the organization, but I'll always be there because my heart is always there. And I'm not gonna release the checkbook. I won't let my husband. <laughs> the money yet. <laughs> I'm like, you got, you got to learn some more things before I'm giving you the checkbook. Um, but in all sincerity, I get to do, I've decided, and, and in my transition from being full-time giver or over-giver of being a taker, I've decided it's time for me to step down, do something I want to do, and that I can still give. That I can do both. I can do both simultaneously. So I've just launched my own business, a greeting card company, Honoring Hill. And I just want to say thank you, and I just want to hope that in that transition that I've provided an example for you to say, guess what, you can do it all the time, both capacities, and when you're doing both, you're at your best. Thank you. All right, so, I feel good about my taking now. <laughs> Thanks to Keisha, I feel good about my taking, and my tank is sitting on full from Mayor Dixon, Ms. O'Neill, and all of our panelists here. What we're gonna do now is bring up our next panelist. Um, she is an author and has been a leader in the business consulting world for over 16 years. She currently serves um, as a business consultant for the Clayton State University Small Business Development Center. She is the key strategist for entertainment related companies um, that serve film, television, music, and digital media markets. She is a woman on the move. She is Judithia P Peterson, excuse me, Pearson, forgive me. All right, join me in celebrating her movement. Good morning. Good morning. Whenever I have the opportunity to speak to um, beautiful women like you, audiences like this, especially this size, I'm usually very curious about why you're here, how you came to this place, to the decision to, to register and, and participate. What do you want to get when you leave? But more importantly, what happens next? And I just want to encourage you all with a couple of points. 
And the biggest one that I can share with you is that truly, and it's not cliche, it sounds like it sometimes, but you have the power to change the world, really your world, with your ideas that you came with today. The journeys that you started five years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, uh, some of us 20 years ago. And what I want to help you to see is from three, four, five years old, to one question that our parents, our teachers, the adults in our lives, what do they ask us? What do you want to be when you grow up? What do you want to be when you grow up? I would like to challenge you all to change that question and the narrative to what do you want to change when you grow up? What impact do you want to make? What do you want to contribute? What do you want to leave to show that my presence in this earth, in this space, in this industry, in this community, is documented with the value that I created, with what I contributed, with the change that I helped facilitate? That question, it raises the bar significantly. Because at that point, it's not about you. It's about why you were put here, the purpose, the passion, the power, what we call in elementary school and high school, if you remember in science class, we call that energy potential. But women on the move, they learn how to transfer potential energy to kinetic energy. That's energy in motion. So if we change that narrative from what I want to be to what I want to change, the narrative always starts with where you are, the conditions that you're currently in. This side of the room over here, this is our as is. It's what already is occurring in our life. It's the ordinary. It's our ex. You are here. But some of us can see things way on the other side of the room that nobody else can see. Maybe they don't get it. And it could be like this internal trigger for you. One person described it as fire shut up in your bones. <laughs> or it could be an external provocation. One too many news stories about the same tragedy. Too high of unemployment rate in your community. A lack of a presence of people who look like you in the settings that you see over here. Whatever that as is, and this to be over there, the place that nobody can see, hear, smell, taste, or touch but you. There's this gap in between. There's this chasm. There's this place where too many soldiers got wounded and died. There's this place that I call ghost stories. Me personally, I'm a fourth generation entrepreneur, second generation creative, and I know none of the stories of the people who came before me and what they did. I call them ghost stories because I heard my cousins and my uncles and other people whisper and talk about it or I saw pictures and photo albums. Oh, this is a cool record shop. This looks like it was 1969, 1970. Where were y'all? Oh, that was your mama and your daddy's store on Moreland Avenue. My parents never talked to me about their record shop on Moreland Avenue. My father is an, was an Emmy Award winning journalist. First person in the country to transition from newspaper to radio to television. I saw his awards on the walls. We knocked over and wrote in your boards when they kicked off in the basement. <laughs> it was ordinary. He never shared his to be with us. For whatever, my grandfather never shared his to be about how an illiterate man in 1917, born of an African American woman and one of the wealthiest white men in the back country of Georgia. I just found out who my great grandfather was a year ago. I rode my bike up and down his street with his name on it. So 
from the time I was three or four years old until we stopped having to do summer vacations in the summer. I don't know about his car dealerships. I don't know about the furniture store that my grandfather was able to put used in an unused woodshed in the back and sold throughout four or five counties. And that's how he was able to sustain six kids and a wife with a third grade education. I don't know those stories firsthand because they died with those people. Don't let your dreams and your to be die with you. So I don't have a whole lot of time. But I do want to say this. This space in the gap, when I started my company 16 years ago, I did what I could with what I had. But I spent a lot of money in the gap, paying for what I didn't know. A lot of time and energy recreating what was already there, but I didn't have relationships and the access to do it. But I was fortunate. I had a lot of things work together for my good. I paid my dues. I went back to school 10 years after being an entrepreneur, got my MBA because I wanted to take it higher. But then I got there and fell in love with just business, period. Not just mine. That was the trigger that drew me there. But I realized those 10 years of a whole bunch of mistakes, we talked about failing forward earlier, I had this reservoir of just information and ingenuity and how to. So at some point, you have to realize that you're no longer the hero of your story. You pivot into this new role called the mentor and you start escorting other heroes from their as is. You show them how to navigate all those pitfalls, all those tests and all those trials, and you go from being Luke to Yoda. <laughs> and you help them get over here to this 2B, but then you caution them. You give them an admonition when you get over there. It's not for you to stay. Make the impact you're supposed to make and go back. Cross those borders again, reinvent, go get some new heroes, and now give them the elixir, the panacea, the magical potion, the tools, all those things that you use to navigate. That is what the SBDC does. I could go through a long list of bullets of what we do. That's what I do. I did it for myself, and then I helped other entrepreneurs figure out how to do it again. And here's the biggest thing. The narrative that you tell yourself, it's the motion picture that every filmmaker knows. When we start this plot, where I want to take my audience when we're done, there's a whole lot of stuff that has to happen in the mix. And there's going to be some conflict, some tension, some ups, some downs, some trials, some triumphs. Make it interesting, but get the audience to where they have to be. That pre-production, production, post-production, post you make the film, it's not done. Now we gotta deliver it to our audience. We gotta create value, we wanna return on our investment, and then what? We wash and repeat and do it again. That's the difference between being a one-hit wonder, or a person that was all about themselves, and the person who realized that once they get to the other side, you mentor and go back and do it. Thank you. Okay, I think I, I've gotten something. I'm taking some more, Keisha. So when my nieces and nephews, who are some still finding themselves, call me as a mentor, Judith here, I can, Sarah, tell them to close their eyes, look on one side, and find their now, here and now, all right? And in transition to looking to the other side, Mayor, I'm going to tell them, pray, dear Lord, show me where am I supposed to be? And then they look to the other side, and they see that. All right. I got it? Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. So at this time, we're going to bring up our next panelist. 
And she is the CEO of Positive Press Public Relations Firm and the executive producer of Clayton County Access Television, CCTV 23. And I know you guys probably saw her, right, on country music television's reality show, Cheerleader Again. Uh -huh, I went to YouTube. I saw that. Y'all check it out if you haven't. Okay, it's great. And there's so much more about her, but again, she has also agreed that I don't have to read the entire bio. Go online, check out McNair Productions, and you can see um, the full bio there. She is a woman on the move. She is Lynetta Griffin. Good morning. Just trying to make sure it's still morning. All right, so my entire life has been balancing between my personal projects, whether I'm interviewing, because by trade, my degree is journalism. And then I own Positive Press PR, and we do with all kinds of projects, and then we have access television. So yes, I am all over the place. But about a little over a year and a half ago, I was asked to take on the project with Clayton County. Someone mentioned building our communities. I was, I was raised here in Clayton County. I graduated here. I'm raising my family here. I started my business here. So it only made sense to come back and to help build my community. Who owns a business in here? Who's a business owner? Raise your hand. Who owns a business in Clayton County? Okay. The thing that's trending right now and that ties all of my projects together is always television, it's always filming, it's always video. How many of you guys are completely scared of the camera? Anybody? Just two? It's up there. We're like this. Okay. But if we ask you for an interview right now, somebody's going to run, right? <laughs> all right, so I'm going to talk about today to all the business owners, increasing your presence using video marketing, OK? All right, so we actually have a presentation up on the screen. Go to the next slide. OK, myths about video marketing. It's expensive. How many of you guys think that video marketing is too expensive for your business or your organization? I don't have a budget. I need a, pro a production studio and a team to do it. There are so many videos to compete with. I don't know what to say. Video doesn't sell like text and print copy and I'm not good on camera. So when I took on the project, I assessed the channel, which was channel 23. Now we've expanded to um, AT&T U versus channel 99 as well. Just a little over a year. So I looked at it and there were just these traditional slides that were airing. So I said, okay, well, we don't have any video. Okay, what's my budget? You don't have one. Okay. So we had to be really, really creative with our marketing efforts and the things that we we're gonna do to take it to a whole nother level. In just a little over a year with a zero budget, we are now airing over 100 videos and we also have expanded to our online presence and now we have had over 15,000 online views. And that is really big for someone who doesn't even have a camera because we're like begging, asking, if you ask us for an interview, can you purchase us this piece of equipment? You have to learn how to ask for things that you want as well. So let's talk about 10 stats behind the power of video marketing. If you guys want to take a look up here with me. Having video on the landing page of your website makes it 53% more likely to show up on page one of Google. Does that make sense? Now in red after all of these, these are the sources if you want to write that down and go back and Google them to find out more about how to take your video marketing to another level, you may want to do that. 59% of senior executives prefer video over text. Blog posts incorporating video attract three times as many inbound links as blog posts without video. Video attracts two to three times as many monthly visitors. It doubles their time spent on your website 
and it has 157% increase in organic traffic from search engines. Can we go to the next slide for me? There we go. Okay, video equals higher viewer retention. Let's go back one. There we go. Number five, guys. Video equals higher viewer retention. The information retained in a one minute video online is equal to about 1.8 million written words. Number six, video and email marketing can increase click through rates by more than 90%. So if you just have that video, it's more, you have more of a chance of people going to other links on your website. How many of you guys have been up or you've seen a workout video on a website and then you ended up purchasing T25 because it looked good, you know, it looked like you could do it or you want the results, but it's the video. But if you just read about it, would you be more likely to purchase it? Or if you see the video, you have to see it, right? It makes a big difference. Number seven, the average user users spends 88% more time on a website with video. Next slide. Okay, of the 80% of internet users who watched a video ad, 46% took some sort of action after viewing the ad. So they either, either purchased something with you, they've either shared it with someone else that they knew, they put some kind of action behind just that video. Video is now the sixth most popular content marketing tactic, as 70% of marketers use some form of online video for their overall strategies. And number 10, about 46% of people say they'd be more likely to seek out information about the product or the service that you offer after seeing an online video. Okay. Now, our top five marketing tips. This is just my top five, the ones that I recommend for you. How many of you guys have your 30 second elevator pitch for your business? 30 second pitch. You guys know how important that is? You have it? Okay, good. Master it. If you don't have one, get one. Practice one and film it. Okay, you do not have to have a full production team to do this. You guys have an iPhone? You have a Samsung? You have a phone? You have an iPad? Film it. Put it on your YouTube channel. If you don't have one, get one. Add video to your website using your YouTube channel for your brand or your business. Now, it's probably going to be split in here. We probably have some people who actually have businesses, some. You are your business. You're building your brand. Either way it goes, video will take you to another level. Share video on social media. Now, this one does not have to be your video. So if you have one, share it. But if you are in a, an industry, say public relations, and someone is putting out really good tips that will help someone, share that video because people are still driving that back to you as a source for sharing that information. Use email marketing to expand your audience. How many of you guys use Constant Contact, MailChimp, Eye Contact? Those will take you to another level. They also offer social media shares. So you can put your, your Twitter and your Facebook and your LinkedIn all in there so when that message goes out to your database, it automatically goes directly to your social media pages. It cut out an entire step of marketing. And then use hashtags to increase your visibility. How many of you guys hashtag? So I put up there um, Women on the Move, but it's actually Women on the Move Summit 2014 for the hashtag for today. So if you are going to tweet or um, Facebook about what's going on today, make sure you use that hashtag. Everyone that clicks into that hashtag is going to see everyone that attended the summit or put any kind of information out there about it and it ties you in there. So if they see that you were here, and they click into it, guess what? That could be a new follower for you. Just because you attend it. It just ties you to the event. And it has a lot of power behind it. Okay, the next one I want to show you a video that I found that someone is landing their pitch. And I just want you to take a look at it really quick. Then Eddie Turner, let's start with you. Look straight into that camera. You got 30 seconds. Give us your pitch. Well, I am extremely passionate about technology and learning. And I am very interested in using my years of experience in technology support and teaching 
combined with my Northwestern education to help manage an organization's technology project team or an organization that has a learning and talent development department, I'd love to help them power up their employee engagement through the use of technologies such as social media and the Apple iPhone. Look at that, right on the money, and you're very good with time. What is the most important thing? If you're in an elevator and it takes 30 seconds to get to the next floor, and you're in there with someone that is going to change your life or take your brand or your business to the next level, you better sell it. And you have 30 seconds to do it. Get in the mirror, film it, learn it, memorize it, film it, put it everywhere that you can so that people can know about your business. The next slide for me. This is one of my favorite quotes. Change begins at the end of your comfort zone. That's also success. At the end, get uncomfortable. If you don't like being in front of a camera, get in front of the camera. If you don't like public speaking, ask to speak. If you don't like approaching people to give out your business cards, and you're a hairstylist, and you see a woman who needs her hair done, you need to make it, you step up, and you give out those business cards. I remember when I first started my company, I put together a formula. I did not go to sleep or to bed or at home at night until I gave out 20 business cards. But that was my fear. I was nervous. I was like, what if they don't like me? What if they're not interested? You never know. What if they share the card with somebody who is interested? Yes. Get out of that comfort zone and push yourself to do the things you don't really want to do. And do them when you don't want to. When you're tired, that's when you need to do it. Because now you're building your strength and you're taking yourself to the next level. Okay? The next one, I need a volunteer. I need one woman who has been in business for less than five years. Come on up. that we've done, I want you to track your media. Anything that you do, if you do a talk show, a radio show, a magazine article, I want you to pull that together so that when someone, or you want to pitch yourself to a larger network and take it to another level, you don't have to go around and try to pull all this information up. I want you to put together a reel of all the video you've done. I want you to put together all your magazine articles and put them on your website. If you are self-branding, don't be afraid to do a glenatagriffin.com. You are your brand. Okay, um, let's go to the next slide. If you want to see that it is on my website, um, my Twitter handle is at Glenetta Griffin, GlenettaGriffin.com. My company, uh, Positive Press PR, and I do have cards. And the next slide. Clayton County Access Television, if you are a part of this community or you're going to be, 
plug into the community and plug into your local government, okay? It is so important. You can join our email list. You can text the word Clayton to 22828. Join right from your cell phone right now. ClaytonTV23.com, Comcast Channel 23, and AT&T Uverse. Everything is online. Thank you for your time. You got it? Okay. All right, so Mayor Dixon, we have to do more than just check and respond to our emails and text messages. We have to start tracking our media. Okay, we're going to need to bring in somebody for that. Okay, okay, all right. Okay, all right. Now, ladies and gentlemen, okay, Miss, Miss O'Neill has, has taken her seat on the panel. If you missed this morning, you missed a treat from her, um, but she will be available with the rest of the panelists for questions. Um, and that's what we're going to do at this time is open up the floor for questions. We're going to start off where we left off. Um, with the questions. Um, I believe this young lady right here had a question. The mic is coming to you. Okay, do you still want to um, ask your question at this time? Because we did promise you the first slot. Well, it was more than a question. Okay. Um, what do you Really? 
Well, Donald is a gentleman who lived next door to us when I was young, just before my mother passed away. Okay, Miss Miss Queen, I have to with you a little bit. You almost hear me? Anna? No. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But I understand what you're saying. So we can get to that point. But what okay. I'm saying is all the death, and everything, and through it all. Okay. Because he passed away, and I was to go to that funeral, but because of all the situations that happened, and I'm speaking about Jennifer. Okay. Yes. Okay. So my point is, Sarah. Everything is connected. Everything is connected. And it was somebody who said that we were here because it was a spiritual, and to me it's a spiritual movement, okay? Lucille O'Neill, that's my middle name. My son's birthday is the same day as mine. So yes, when you get to the point, but Sarah is what I want to address. Sarah, venture capitalists, okay? I live in Silicon Valley, okay? I know a venture capitalist personally. Okay, I have the funding for my business and everything. And I was wondering, I said, how am I going to be able to, you know, what am I going to do? I said, well, I have a $2.2 million budget. Okay, he said, well, Sarah, do you mind right speaking with her? Um, yeah. after right, but I, you have to go. Yeah, yes, ma'am. Right, sorry. but it wasn't, you know, I'm just overjoyed. I know we can all speak, but I think, is this the first day you No, I've had, I've done several, it's the first of this one. Oh, yes, ma'am. This is the first annual. Know, we'll be I here next year. Maybe yeah, you can speak well, with Ms. McNair yeah, yeah, yeah. about that, okay? Every year. Every year. Okay, thank, okay, you. thank you, Ms. Right. Okay. Yeah. 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 Let, let me remind everyone um, that this is not an open forum, first of all. Um, I'm sorry I have to put on my other hat that I want. I didn't want to have to deal with today. I took off from work to be here today. All right? And so at this point, we are asking questions. And if you would please um, ask your questions, and they should be questions, and they should focus on marketing, nonprofit etiquette, small business development, and film and entertainment. Thank you so much. Hi, my name is April Land, and I'm the founder of Women's Women and Associates here in Clayton County. We help women with domestic violence issues, substance abuse issues. And you were speaking about nonprofits, and I was wondering what was your biggest challenge in having a nonprofit, um, maintaining that nonprofit, and also what advice can you give to keep a client based nonprofit organization? The challenge, I think, well, first of all, let me say this. I think um, because we have the platform via my husband and his name and name recognition, people think it's a lot bigger than it is, when in reality, we make the analogy of the Oz when you pull back the curtain and it's just Richard Pryor. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we say the Brian Cameron family is just coming out, it's me, you know, in and, and a, and a bag. And so, you know, and so I think it's really perception. Um, I think the challenge is with, with most of us, you know, are the same. It's keeping the doors. It's getting the fan power. It's yes, we know we need to do this, and these are our goals. But <laughs> this, you know, it, it's steps. It's baby steps. And being patient and staying focused. Um, I think that the most incredible thing you can do is really solicit and really solidify your volunteer base. Um, and, and you may be more technical in terms of the types of advisors, counselors, trained, you know, people that you need in place. But for us. It was we don't we can't run programs without our volunteers. We can't go into the communities without our volunteers. So for us, it was really not just having a volunteer base, but working it. These these guys are our family. Some of them have been with us longer than I have been on board. I came on two years after Ryan established, to be quite honest. And some of them have been around longer than me. We do job referrals. We do outings together. We I mean, what do you, it, it's more of a we're, we're really truly a family and they help us sustain through those times and a lot of them, you know, end up turning to, um, you know, the financial challenges that come along with that. Thank you. Do we have a question over here? Hello, everybody. How are you doing? I just want to say I really have been enjoying myself. I'm so full. I hope I don't cry with my question. But um, as a, a entrepreneur, I call myself a serial entrepreneur. I would like to ask all the ladies on the panel, how is it that you transition from your first interest in your project to your second interest? You know, after you completed your first set of goals, what do you use to motivate yourself to start to your second set? Start. <laughs> If 
I understand your question correctly, you wanted to know about that space in between one venture to the next. Um, I think that varies from person to person. So I'll share my own little bit of tidbit. Sometimes it just takes a good slip kick in the pants <laughs> to move you from one project that you fulfill, that you're done with it, and it's time to move on to something else. But that first business could be very comfortable. It could be profitable. And it may not be a matter of that's a failure, so you want to move on to the next project. It may be it's time to have an exit plan, a succession plan, pass that mantle on to someone else who can pick up where you left off. That transition becomes much more peaceful when you start a new project because you don't feel like you left things on the table, undone, unfinished, and complete. Um, but if it is a matter of it's just closing one door and opening another, sometimes you'll have some resistance from people around you trying to figure out why are you shifting gears. This is working. Leave it alone. You've been an executive there for 25 years. What do you think if you're going to start your own company or a nonprofit or a scholarship fund or whatever? You've got to be driven first internally by your why and then just take the steps and do the next thing that you know to do to move forward into the next, the next season of your life. Does that help? Is that I'm just going to touch a little bit on that as well. You have to find your passion or find how to enjoy everything that you're doing. Have you guys ever heard of if you're doing what you love, it doesn't feel like work? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even if you're in a project that it may not be exactly what you want to do right now, find a way to enjoy it. Find a way to customize it and to make it yours so that you can enjoy that moment. And then understand that all projects are not permanent. Sometimes it is temporary. So things are seasonal. It may just be a time that you have to go through until you pass on to the next time and you'll know when that time is, and God will tell you when that time is, but you may have to get through that entire season in order to properly prepare you for the next one. Yeah. Okay. Right, we have time for one last question. Uh -huh. My name is Tracy Bridgman, and first of all, I'd like to thank all the speakers that are on the panel today. Uh, right now, I'm overwhelmed because everyone up there is actually in my field, my TV, and that was Mrs. Lynetta. Mm -hmm. Um, how do you feel that that gives you the voice to do? Do you feel that that gives you more the voice to express the truth in which the first speaker, uh, Mrs. Cameron, was talking about being true? And, and that's the problem that I found in me. I couldn't really be true to myself because I had to be dictated. How do you find within your public um, access the freedom to, to be honest with your views and the view that might be depending on you? Okay. Um, let me just say that I started out as a journalist and working in a newsroom and I did not like the environment. So when you were saying about you know the negative publicity, that's why I started my firm. Because it's positive press and I got a chance to explore all the positive projects and work with the nonprofit organizations that had positive messages and I had a chance to push those positive stories forward. So that was the purpose for me starting my company. I'm not in public access, I'm in government access channels. And there, there are three different channels. There's community access, there's public access, and there's government. So I'm in government. It does give us a voice. It's not my voice. It's the community's voice. It's the government's voice. So now I have the opportunity to tell the story. So when the negative publicity hits the media, I have the opportunity to go back in and tell what the real story is and what the real angle is, even though they may be trying to knock us down in the back end. Because we all know Clay County has a perception we're trying to turn around and we're rebranding and we're changing that. So right now, we are that voice. So what we do on a daily basis, if there's some negative publicity, you better believe we are turning it around. It's a press release, it's an interview, it's some kind of way that we are turning that around. So we are the voice of the community and we're the voice of the government and we tell it from our angles. But for you, if you're independent, don't be afraid to create a media outlet or don't be afraid to be a freelance blogger and tell the stories that you want to tell and push them to those people that you want them to go to. Does that help? Yes. All right, and so we have one last question and I'm gonna ask um, for the person who needs to know. Um, Miss O'Neill, so there's someone, uh, a family member of a prominent entertainer um, that has an organization um, that raises money and 
one of the issues that they have is that people think, you have all the money, why are you raising the money? You know, why do you need to raise it? Do you ever encounter that? I'm glad you asked that question. <laughs> and it has been my experience dealing with the two nonprofit organizations that I deal with that yes, they do believe that our family has the money, but I tell the people that I come in contact with, this is not a Shaquille O'Neal event. The Odessa Chambers Quality Life Fund was established by my brother and my two sisters and I. And we wanted to raise money for nursing scholarships in honor of our mother. We never mentioned Shaquille's name. He's part of the family, but this is not a Shaquille O'Neal event. So we established a nonprofit organization and we began to solicit sponsorship dollars for our funding. And the other nonprofit organization that was developed was developed by the mothers of the professional basketball players. So they thought we all had money. What are we raising money for? <laughs> but we put together a simple mission, and that mission is to support the communities where our sons and our daughters live, work, and play. So it had nothing to do with our children's financial situation. We were straight up forward, we were clear, we told the truth. We're raising money so that we can help somebody else. Simple mission, and that's why I encourage people, keep things simple on a daily basis, and just tell the truth. We want your money so we can give to the children over here. They need to go to school because they don't have the financial resources. Just simple, and that's what we do in both nonprofit organizations that I deal with. I, I try to be honest in what I do. We don't have any paid staff in our nonprofit organizations. We have volunteers. Kim has worked with me for 20 years putting together a volunteer team and the things that I do in the nonprofits. And so when you get somebody dedicated to what you're doing, you can have help. You don't need a paid staff. You just get somebody to work with you. We don't have events every week, but we have some very, very prominent events that the community where we live, they know about it. We do it once, twice a year, and we do what we set out to do. But when you're up front, I tell them anyway, all the time, this is not a Shaquille O'Neal event, and I say a whole name, <laughs> so they, they, they know. And I'm pretty sure the other mothers have to give that same message because in all reality, it's not, and I didn't know it's in my pocketbook. My name is Lucille O'Neal, I go to a whole store. I, I have to tell them, and I will bite my tongue. Tell a girl, go on, tell a little bit. <laughs> Thank you for asking that question. <laughs> we was waiting, right? Yeah.